it has its frame issues. I'm not gonna lie, especially when you're playing really two player. If you're oh. <laughs> and it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> In case you guys aren't familiar, Kyle has a hood side. <laughs> oh no! Pull the PewDiePie. He just went angry. Oh yeah, man! He just went angry. <laughs> he totally went oh, like, "Oh my god!" I it wasn't. It that. wasn't a hard R, so we're good. Oh my fuck! That was funny. Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 38 of the Thought Patrol Podcast. And this episode, it is just me and your lovely co-host, Sean, joining us tonight over the discords. OG. Indeed. We are back to the boys from episode one. Don't go back and listen to episode one. I forbid you. (laughs) Uh, I think it was, I liked it. It was fun. It was all right. I mean... It, I'm sure there could be worse episode ones. We had we kind of had our head <laughs> on our shoulders for there, so it wasn't that bad. But still, you, how anal retentive I am about everything, um, it was probably pretty bad if I were to go back and look at it. So we're Are back you two to two fingers, two I'm, fingers I'm, anal retentive. I'm two fingers anal retentive. I, I like that as a meme now for this podcast. We'll just keep that going. <laughs> Hashtag two fingers. I like it. Hashtag yeah. yeah. Indeed. So, I'm glad you could join me again this week, Sean. Uh, again, it is only the two of us for tonight. Caitlin had some homework to do, so she wasn't able to join sad. us. Sad. Yeah, sadness envelops me. That was, um, we have to have a girl, man. How do you, how are we going to get all these viewers if we don't have a girl talking? That's what all the guys yeah. come here for, right? Plus, so, like, she's smart and she uses two fingers. And I know, she's right? my boo. We're, we're going to be married, but have many children. Exactly, so. <laughs> and they will all be angry. And, uh, Two fingers. so Yeah, two fingers. Exactly. That's we shall it. teach them from a young two age fingers. that two fingers it. are vital. So. Yeah. I'm going to let her actually do the physical teaching, though. I don't want to be a part of that. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's, 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 a, know, that's a woman's that's job. Important. Teaching yeah, the two-finger rule. Two fingers. Exactly. That's a woman's job. It's something you have to be kind and gentle about. Well, yeah. Like, I'll just stick to screwing in light bulbs. Yeah. And smashing things. And, yeah, before we continue... I, I did forget about this last week, but we had um, we spoke with one of your friends, Sean. What was his name again? Uh, Aaron, I think. Aaron? I think it was Aaron. Aaron. And we talked about him. He said he the was going to... Beautiful, choose. sexy hair man, but I think it, I think it was Aaron that we okay. talked with. Um, and he said he was going to check out our podcast. So if you are listening, I do apologize for last week. We completely forgot. But uh, we I, are giving you. I didn't you... forget. I reminded you. You forgot. Listen, he did not. <laughs> we started the episode. You could have reminded me in the middle of the episode, but he he did not. Um, but again, we thank you for every one of you out there. Funny guy, health teacher Loki, Carlos, everyone out there that tunes in regularly, hangs out with us, and uh, we just appreciate all of you for just again sticking with us. So we'll leave it at that. Enough kiss assing for this episode. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, Sean, how's your week been? I uh, the I'm I've been hovering at the same level of awful for a little while now. Since I took this new position to pad out my resume with new skills with a Z, nice. I took a downgrade in pay, oh. and I have been not making by very well. That's so um, that has been an exciting yeah. thing for me is to not be able to do any of the things that I had planned to do. And then there's interesting things on the horizon that I am terrified I will not be able to do because I am not making any money. I might as well be working for free. So that is a over, you know, an overarching concern that I have. So you're getting skills with a Z, but you're poor with a pH. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It's it's bad for you. It's not good. Yeah. That, that sucks. Uh, Again, hopefully it works out for you in the long run. You know I love you with every fiber of my being, even though we get in our, our married couple arguments sometimes. Um, I still think you, you'll you hold up through the end, plus ultra, so we could... Uh, plus ultra. Yeah, keep keep Sam's little bit in there for when he's not here. <laughs> so, 
I'm well, I'm glad you're able to join me again this week. Um, I know that we've all been doing Final Fantasy still, just absolutely throwing our lives away to that game. But um, it's been fun. Happily. Yeah. Uh, definitely, there'd be, there'd be some issue here and there with maybe teams that don't know exactly what they're doing or dealing with boring grinding in certain areas. Like, the crafting can get there. But uh, for the most part, it's a very enjoyable experience. Very fun game. Again, if you do ever want to join us in this grandiose adventure we're having, we do play on the Exodus server. It's on the eastern coast of the U.S. So if you're able to get in that server, we'd love to have you. We have our own grand, our own free company. It's a guild. There's like nine people in it. And uh, yeah, we just chill out, play together, and have a good time. So definitely love to have any of you join us. If you're tuning in, that sounds like something you'd enjoy. Again, it's an MMO. It's got a subscription fee. So that's definitely big barriers to entry there. But uh, they do have a free trial that you can get to like level 25 with, and then you don't have to pay for a subscription until you decide to do something else. So definitely cool stuff. We are all very much enjoying it. Besides that, I know me, Hector, and one of my next door neighbors, Chris, um, we've all gotten back into League, been playing a lot of League, or here and there, uh, at least a game every day. Again, the game's so much fun. I've been playing that game for like six years, and I still enjoy it. Um, and that I had my time where my soul was devoted to that game as well, especially with the amount of money I spent in it. Um, uh, a measly, measly $1,300, nothing big, nothing big, nothing out of the ordinary, measly $1,300 on a free game. It was all spent on cosmetic skins. Um, let's stop talking about that. It was that much. You can, if you go on their website, they have a, like a certain part of their website, which like all account information, you could type in your account number. You can get more information such as like IP logins and stuff like that. Say if you think you've been like hacked or something like that. But uh, for you could check how much money you spent on the game and stuff like that. But again, I've been playing the game for six years. And I could say the most of that probably happened within the first two. Because I had the most time. Still in school. Like all my Christmas presents. It was the only game I fucking played for two years. I had a little shitty potato laptop. That's all I went to. I was I was pulling barely thirty frames. If a team fight started, it dropped down to fifteen. But hey, I was loving it. So, and now having the beast of a machine that I have now, and I'm able to enjoy it in its beautiful, th- practically three hundred frames at most points, and definitely glad to be back. And also, same thing. If you guys ever want to like play with us, if you guys ever want to hang out with us, feel free to join the Discord. Feel free to. Hit us up in one way or another, and I'd love to play games with you guys. Uh, we have a pretty decent group size already, but we're always welcome to new people coming in and hanging out with us. Always a fun time. So we would really appreciate, again, any sort of interaction. Like, that's all. That's I always push that, in, like, interaction. I think it's really cool to just hear from you guys and what kind of people that tune in to this retarded show, uh, what kind of people we draw. So I think that'd be pretty cool. But um, besides that, a little bit of Siege here and there. Nothing big. Um, Monster Hunter did come out on Friday. But I made an executive decision to put off me starting that game to finish Assassin's Creed. So I've sat down, buckled down with Assassin's Creed because I was only like seven hours in. And I really want to finish it before we get into this new year. And we have to deal with all these new releases coming out. We got Nino Cooney in March along with Far Cry, along with a bunch of other games. We got God of War now in April. So before we get just fucking swamped with games, I want to make sure I finish what we have left, what I had left over from last year so I'm not building a backlog because backlogs would just continue to expand. They never fucking get smaller. So I'm just working on that right now. But uh, loving Assassin's Creed, such a fucking pretty game. It was cool. Uh, today, Sean, we went out to lunch after church. And um, I was showing pictures that I took in the game to my mother. And I'm like, do you think this is real? Blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. It was like beautiful, everything on ultra high, like a picture of two pyramids and flowers and shit. I put in the Discord. And she said, oh, that that looks really nice and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, it's a game. And I was telling her about the new museum mode they had. And she was like genuinely interested in the game. Like, Like she was like, it sounded like something that she would like to try. Because, again, there's no enemies that you have to deal with. You just walk around and they teach you about Egypt. 
So I think when that comes out, I might see if I could get her to play it, sit down in the chair and, um, I might, that'd be an interesting idea for a video even. I don't know, but, uh, I'd love to see what she thinks about the game, especially with the game being as pretty as it is. That game is absolutely gorgeous. But again, enjoying the shit out of it. Been tussling with... Because the thing with like these big, open, expansive Ubisoft games that they just shit out a bunch of things to do on the map and then you kind of just do them is I always have the issue of should I finish an area first before I move on or focus on the story and come back and complete everything once I finish the game. But then there's like level issues because you're not a high enough level if you're just blowing through main story. So I'm like fighting with what I want to do. So I got probably got about like 33 something percent of the map completed about 30 hours in. And I'm just just blowing through everything. But again, very enjoyable. The story is nothing really to write home about, but the combat's fun. And I like the changes to the game for the most part. So I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I picked it up. Because I wasn't going to initially. It looked janky and stuff like that. But I'm glad I did decide to drop the money to get it. I got it for like 40 bucks on during the winter sale. So I'm glad I picked it up and I'm enjoying it a lot. But before we move into Monster Hunter, that needs to be off my list. So hopefully around sometime in the middle of next week, I'll be good to go with Monster Hunter. And I'll be ready to start playing the game, start enjoying it, um, and just get back. I've heard nothing but good, the good things about it. IGN gave it like a fucking 9.5. And I've, again, heard nothing but good things, so I'm super excited to get into it. It looks really good. And again, being on console, being able to play with friends, which is something I never had the luxury of doing before with it being on the 3DS, just I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited to uh, get into that game. So that's that's where we've been on that on that front. So if you did pick up Monster Hunter and you do want to play with us, I know Funny Guy was thinking about getting it. We played the beta with him. Um, I'll, I'll be there with you guys. Yeah. I want to make my voice heard. If you uh, shop at Best Buy, don't <laughs> don't spend your money there. Don't go near the store. Don't look in its general stank direction. <laughs> Just don't fucking go there. We got a bad All experience. Right? Do not go to the store. They, I had. Just don't do it. Don't. It's a bad place. It's a bad experience. I had somebody lie to me, to my face. And I lost an opportunity to obtain something because they lied to me to get me to buy it then, saying that the store does engage in something that they do not, when the website did and the store did not, and they lied to me. And then a week later, I showed up to pick up my pre-ordered product and get my additional item, and there is no additional item for ordering things through the store. And it was the same motherfucking bitch, Kelly. Just so you know, Kelly well, at the Sanford chill, Best Buy, dude. if you want to stop chill. by and give her shit, feel chill. free. Oh, chill out, man. She's a lying bitch. Oh, my gosh. You don't got to go name dropping. I don't know her last name. It's on her name tag. She shows it to everyone in the store. It's not private. Again. Best Buy. It's a crappy place. <laughs> buy your shit from Amazon. Toys R Us. Amazon's nice. Fucking even GameStop. I don't care, but don't spend money at Best Buy. They haven't earned it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we had a bit of an altercation over the week, and Sean does not have Monster That's Hunter right. because of. Uh, did you ever get pick up Monster Hunter? or Did you hold off for now? Nope. No, okay. I haven't got the money back in my account yet. Oh, okay. Again, because I refused to give them the money for the same exact copy of the game I could have ordered somebody else. I paid them for that copy plus that steelbook, and they told me that I would get it. They told me that I was fucking totally gravy for it, and then I show up a week later, and she's like. Oh, no, you can only do that online. Uh, no, actually, the same exact face that I'm looking at right now told me six days ago that this was cool. So why don't you hand me one of those steel books that's in that pile over there, and I will be out of your hair. And she's like, oh, no, those are for online orders. I can't do that. And I'm like, but I could have made an online order, but I did not because you told me I could order it through the store. So you're a horrible piece of shit. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. I started off polite. I didn't start calling her a horrible piece of shit until the last few moments I was there. But, uh, yeah, you know, if you see her throw vegetables at her face. Damn. Hey, we don't openly condone throwing vegetables at people's faces here on the Thought Patrol podcast. Maybe they don't, murder. I do. Maybe murder, but no throwing people. No, Nothing's a worse killer than embarrassment. Okay, so we don't I support that. one hundred percent. I want her to suffer. I don't want her to lose her job. I want her to think she's gonna lose her job. <laughs> I want her to fucking have some sort of uh, punishment for lying to somebody. If you're a smarmy cunt when I go into a place, that's cool. 
That's your right. It's fucking retail. People are assholes. I'm okay with that. Just do your job in terms of giving me what I'm paying for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do what you're supposed to do. I'll do what I'm supposed to do. I'll be gone. Don't fucking lie to me. Don't fucking lie to me. I will burn you alive. <laughs> I've already been in contact with, with uh, Best Buy Corporate. They've already received information to me through the website and through a phone call. I have another phone call coming from them next Tuesday. I've spoken with two managers and the site manager for the Best Buy in Sanford. This fucking bitch is going down. You don't lie to me. Don't do that shit. Okay, if you it was an easy thing. It was so easy to avoid. Easy to avoid. Just don't say you can buy it in the store. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, should I get it online? Yeah, I think that might be the best bet because I don't know if we can do that here in the store. How easy was that? So easy. Yeah, if you could Fuck. not tell, Sean's not a fan of being Bitch. lied to or being told that he is lying. Neither of those cope well with him. So if you ever meet Sean, just give him a hug, a little kiss on his uh, pink parts, and you're free to go. So, but yeah, week has been good. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that we might have that done. We were at we were at a, a restaurant. They were playing Evanescence for some reason. I felt felt like I was back in fucking middle school. And it was uh, what's that one that they them. what's that one that they memed to shit? Bring me to life. I think it's called. They were playing that. That was their first single in a sports bar. That's what they were playing on the radio. I'm like, it's a rock song. It's a metal song. What's the big deal? Is that really metal? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> they were more of a mainstream goth metal, but they definitely had metal parts. And then when Ben Moody started his band, which was like Evanescence 2, <laughs> can't remember, Something Angels or Falling Something. I can't remember, but they were very similar. Okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I only heard that one song. I didn't listen to them ever. So. I did. I saw them a lot. I wanted to get her pregnant for a while. Come here, baby. <laughs> This is not your podcast, puppy. This is the adult podcast. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm thinking anything that happened, I think we're good. Uh, I don't think we saw any movies. Nothing major. I recently started Land of the Lustrous with Hector and my, not my father, but I think we watched a little bit of one episode. I don't remember exactly. We also watched an episode of Electric Dreams. It's like a show on Amazon. It's kind of like Black Mirror, but more sci-fi esque. And it's not—I don't know. It was—it was weird. We watched like the third episode. It was okay. I mean, I—I I, it didn't like blow me away. It wasn't anything super special. Uh, but I heard things about it, and we decided to watch it. It was just okay. I mean, and a lot of people will say that about Black Mirror too. There's only like certain episodes that really stand out, where a lot of them end up not like resonating with people. So. But, you know, hey. Black Mirror is more of a uh, science fiction cyber yeah, noir. It reminds me like of a modern thriller. day. It reminds me like a modern day. Um, what was that old show that they used to do? And it was all about like the twist. What was it called? Twilight Zone. It reminds me of that. Like the a worst modern thing about day. The Twilight Zone was all parallel versions of reality with different fucked up weird sci fi things going on and occasionally horror. Yeah, so Black Mirror is very different than that. <laughs> I mean, I, but a lot of the time you'd see, I mean, not a lot of the time, but there'd be some episodes that you'd see in in um, Twilight Zone that were like a deconstruction of something that already exists in either pop culture or something like that, and they'd take like a, a they put like a they put like a twist on it sometimes. That's more like Ray Bradbury's Outer Limits than the Twilight Zone, though. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. But there's, I don't know. But they I, were all fairly similar in that respect, but they. But Black Mirror, the point behind Black Mirror is showing people the negative direction, relying, incorporating technology in the wrong ways or relying too heavily on technology can take us. Yeah. How it just kind of tears things apart, which is the job of things like science fiction anyway. And guess who wants to sit in daddy's lap while he is working the podcast? Kyle, right? (laughs) Kyle wants to sit (laughs) in daddy's lap. Yes, it's it's also (laughs) Kyle. Yes, I shall instant transmission through the internet. I got you. I'll be there in a second. Uh, what was I gonna say? So yeah, we Throw watched some we, uh, flu powder in a fireplace. We we watched Electric Dreams. It was okay. Land of the Lustrous is okay, is pretty good actually. Um, and I know it may sound like I'm I have like a bias towards anime and I don't like live action. I don't know, but I I just wasn't a fan of Electric Dreams. It was it was okay. 
I kind of saw the twist before it happened. And they had a bunch of like unneeded like sexiness. I mean, again, that's TV and it, it happens and you can say the same thing gets to be said about certain anime shows. Uh, they they ha- they're certainly not barred from that um that uh issue, but I just I didn't feel like a lot of what we saw like in the in this in the certain scenes was necessary. I was watching episode three. It was about like Earth in the future. I don't know. But it was okay. I didn't really it didn't really again, it didn't really blow me away. But hey. So that's about it pretty much. Le- oh yeah, Land of the Lustrous, interesting show. Uh basically it's like these uh you know how anime likes to take things that aren't human and make them human. And they did that with minerals this time. So they took the different ideas behind different minerals, such as um, phospholite or diamonds or like obsidian. I I think it's like obsidian. It's not exactly called obsidian. Jade and all these different types of minerals. And they turned them into girls and built personalities out of them. And based on the, the qualities of what the gem is or the mineral is, they'll build that into the personality of the character. And then uh, now there's like these things that come from the, like the moon to try and take the girls and harvest them for jewelry and shit. It's interesting. Again, it's creative and it's not like, and it's one really nice thing about it is, you know how normally Sean, when there's CG in an anime, it's, it's like almost so bad. It's offensive. And that's not in all cases, but it like, like the first season of Knights of Sidonia, was like one of the first things that Polygon did. It wasn't the best. It, it looked very rugged, and they got better as they moved through. Like like Ajin season two looked a lot better than Ajin season one, and um, Knights of Sidonia season two looked a lot better than Knights of Sidonia season one. And they're getting better with it. Like the new Godzilla anime that they made looks really good, and that's done by Polygon Pictures. And all they do is CG, entirely CG animation. Um, but this is like that. It has all the models are CG, but it is like fantastic. Like it, I mean, you can, again, it has the things with CG that make it weird. It's a little choppy here and there, but for the most part, it's really well done and it it just looks good. It feels like there's a lot of um, animation in the characters, so they feel like they're done in a 2D plane, but they're just 3D models. It's really, it's really interesting how well it is done. I think it won an award even for like best CG anime of the year for 2017. Well, I mean, which isn't anything prestigious because there's not that many often. And when you're, when your other competitors are like berserk, um, I mean, it's again, it's not really a high mantle you're standing on there, but still it was really good. And I've, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm berserk interested. Berserk is this shit. I mean, berserk is good, but that does not say that the recent, uh, continuation of it looked good. But this again, like you stated before, you're more of in it for the story than the animation. But still, there's like some things from that 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 continuation of Berserk that is practically not even animation. It's just pretty bad sometimes. But again, you you make a solid point when you say you're kind of watching it for the story. You don't really care about the animation for the most part. But like they did the movies very well. The movies were good looking because yeah, they're all TV. Yeah. For the most I wasn't part, they're thrilled all thrilled with the animation. It sucked, but. I'd rather have that than no berserk at all. Exactly. And I had no berserk for a very long time. So <laughs> yeah. when they were like, "Okay, we'll give you some berserk now," I was like, "Fuck it, whatever. I don't care what it looks like. Just give it to me." Yeah, I don't care if it's I fucking need it in my life. A flip notebook. Give me berserk. Nope. <laughs> I just need. Yes, that is exactly true. Oh uh, yeah. So I'm glad you're doing good, Sean. Um, uh, kind of. <laughs> I'm glad you're here with me. Uh, one thing that I am not, but I am surviving exactly, and I am awesome. Yes, uh, getting them skills with the Z, and being poor with a PH. I like it. So we're gonna move forward. Yeah, poor with a P W H O R E without the P. That is that's a- <laughs> that sounds almost like like that that like certain talk where it's like almost like kitty like. I can't think of the word for it. Hey, I probably just confused the fuck out of you, but big Latin. No, 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 not Pig Latin. Uh, I can't think of it, but whatever. So move forward. Housekeeping. Real quick. Housekeeping. We're going to talk about ways you could connect with us if you do want to. We have a Discord. You can join. Oral say hi. Snacks. Indeed. Uh, you can come by, pun intended, say hi to us, uh, 
check out the other members in discord maybe try and set up some games again playing games with us i have ps4 pc i have a switch too although <laughs> never had a, never had a recommendate or a someone request to play switch uh usually it's just not there's not a lot there right now um if we talk about anything in this podcast that piques your interest or you have a way of correcting us or something we fucked up we didn't fact check or whatever feel free to let us know in the comments below on the youtube video or the respective podcasters if they do it also if you want more of us we do uh do this podcast every tuesday it comes out at 8 a.m so you can subscribe either on our home channel youtube or again respective podcast service to get us every week we also have a twitter you can check out for updates on the thought patrol crew see what we're doing uh, uh, if we do plan on doing something at any point, what we're doing. Also, if you really like us, you want to get some brownie points, um, some dank respect with the Thought Patrol crew, feel free to leave us an iTunes review. We'd love to uh, hear from you guys. And also, any iTunes review will get read on the podcast, no matter what it is. As long, I mean, I could always censor it, but as long as it's nothing like openly offensive or blatantly racist, I don't know. But some, we're just looking for like constructive feedback. We can help tailor this show to you guys a bit more those of you that are tuning in um but yeah if you're looking for other podcasting services that we're on all of that's in the description below on wherever you're tuning in you can check us out there so that was housekeeping we're going to move forward we actually have mailbag this week we have two three questions actually we're going to go through we'll talk about them a bit we don't actually have i'm going to say it we've performed the cardinal sin we don't actually have a main topic this week so we're going to run through the podcast as normal. Whatever we end up getting hung up on, we'll just let it flow. It'll be a little bit more of a natural episode, and uh, we'll just go through the podcast as normal. We just won't have the main topic at the end. So I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to title this, but we'll figure it out. So we're going to go through these mailbag questions. We might spend a little bit more time on this because of what I said previously. Ooh, excuse me. So let's start with our boy, Sam Harris. Leaving us a question, as always. He says, Dear Thought Patrol, I wish to inquire to the host an enigma that has been heavy on my soul the last few days. In what matter does gaming mean improvement? By this I mean what aspects of gaming, whether this be the proprietors, the developers, or even the consumers that would make gaming a better spectacle, form of entertainment. I wish to hear what your angelic voices will utter. Warm regards to Flash 2189. P.S. Uh, uh, fuck. My phone's on the bed. Ta- Sean, keep him busy. Uh, well, first of all, Sam, weighing heavy on your soul. Really? Come on now. We know you don't have a soul. Damn, God. Don't him. say such things. That's rude. How, how can, you, how can you insult your co-host like that? That's so f- fucked up, Sean. I can't I know. believe we you never, say something like we that. Never Who have we ever insulted? Never, Who have we ever insulted? Ever. Have we ever get done that, that shit that's, out of my podcast? That's a terrible thing. I'm really trying to uh, make time. Here. I keep. I, I also keep imagining him as a redhead for some reason, which also kind of goes along with the no soul bit. Yeah, you're right. Didn't he tell us one time that he was a redhead? I don't know. I've never asked him. I think he, what he is. If like. you are, I Sam, you have no soul. A, but I'm sure you already muscle know that. Bound, muscle bound redhead with like, like a baby oiled up. Oh, dude. Ass cheeks. And you just bounce corners <laughs> off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Sam's face before, so I'm just like photoshopping his face onto a muscly clad dude. I like it. I like what I see. I like what I see. Put his face onto Rocky from Rocky Horror Picture Show, and he can run around in <laughs> gold hot pants for the, like, the majority of the movie. Damn, dude. That's our next YouTube video. We have it. We have it. So all that time we were supposed to be stalling, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I'm looking for a sound bit for Plus Ultra. God damn it! What Sam tried to do last time and we didn't, he didn't get it through. It's okay, guys. Don't worry about it. Plus Ultra. Indeed. Uh, plus, I love that show. It's so good. We are gonna we're gonna get a little bit more into some weeby talk. I might name the episode something like that. Weeb country. I don't know something like that. Um, because we might have a little bit more talking about that. I'm just typing in soundbite to see if I could find it. Because Sam tried uh, instant plus ultra sound button. Let's try it, boys. I hope this doesn't blow your guys' ears out. But, um, okay. Go back to the question. Warm regards by the Flash 2189 PS. Fuck. 
What? what? P.S. Fuck. All right. Wait, wait, listen. Let me move on. Oh, I wasn't loud enough. Man. There you go. It worked. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, something from My Hero Academia. Fantastic show, by the way, which will lead into our next question we have from Funny Guy. Now, he left this question a while ago, so if you're listening, Funny Guy, do not crucify me. Did we answer me. Sam's question, or oh, are we fuck. asking all the questions? Oh, and, fuck, you're right. My God, what I am mean, I doing? I mean, I could just let that go, but they, <laughs> you know, then you'd all feel right. even worse, and then I'd revel See, in that. I, so I tried to do... I, went. I thought the segue was so good that it just had to move on, <laughs> <laughs> but we had to go you're back. Like, fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy for uh, my segue, right? No, I know, right? You screwed up my segue, Sam. We could have had this. All right, so... You soulless bastard. So this question's a little bit weird because he starts with, in what matter does gaming need improvement? And then moves on to talking about making gaming a better spectacle. But, so I guess oh, we'll, we'll, all, we'll I break it up. it needs to be a spectacle. Uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll break it up like first. like 15 episodes on improvement. Yeah, we'll we'll break it up first. Give real quick answers, just because again, it's a question, um, and we're going to answer these questions. So, in what matter does gaming need improvement? I I want to say real quick, no joking. One of my one of my answers for this: we need to remove any game or tell developers, sit them the fuck down, or sit uh, um, game producers. All everybody that makes a game in the game industry needs to be sat down and told that 30 frames per second should be a cardinal sin. That your game no cannot come out. About 30 frames per I second. know no one gives a shit, one. but it looks like fucking trash. And it and I'd love to see more of a focus on getting the frames to 60 before we continue to improve graphics. I don't give a fuck about 4K. I'd rather have my game like run. At 60 frames. You know, there, there were tons of frames that were the game. I'm sorry, of frames. There were tons of games that ran at 60 frames per second. Tons on of frames. Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, the original PlayStation. It wasn't until you started moving up into the higher gen that it started dropping to. 30 I still frames. don't there was think a ton of shit that was. That, at 60 we're gonna frames research that because I still don't think that that was correct. Did this is games absolutely correct on the PS1 run at 60? FPS. Not all of them, but there is a good chunk of them, especially the Saturn, because the Saturn was really good at doing 2D animation. Let's see. We're gonna we have a NeoGAF article. What were the first or earliest 60 FPS 3D console games? Um. Oh, it's actually on Reddit. Today I learned. Today I learned that PS1 has more games running at 60 FPS than either of the next gen consoles. Uh, You're welcome. Why do you can, why do you doubt my pop culture knowledge? Every time I say something, you say it's not true. You research it. You don't apologize for being wrong. We move on to a new subject. This is what happens every time. Damn, a lot of people are using this fact to like talk shit about the PS4 when it first came out. I wish I could get like a list. Like I'm not getting a list here. Games with 3D graphics running at 60 FPS. Okay, here we go. The Sega Saturn had like Fighters Mega Mix, Fighting Vipers, Last mm-hmm. Bronx. Sony PlayStation, the PlayStation 1, had Dance Dance Revolution, Doraemon, which is a Japanese game, Dynasty Warriors, IQ, Kamen Rider, again, Japanese games, Micro Machines, Mortal Kombat 4 in 1998 ran at 60 frames. Uh, There you go. Tekken 3 was 60 frames. A lot of fighting games here. Um, F-Zero X on the 64 ran at 60 frames. Oh, Pretty bear cool in mind, stuff. some of those Saturn games that ran at 60 frames had an additional cartridge to expand the memory to do so. <laughs> like the Street Fighter games added like additional frames of animation and shit in when you put it in the memory cartridge. Someone's like 60 FPS, but at 512 by 480. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Okay, well, there you go. Today I learned. We should do something like that, Sean. Make that a segment. T- today I learned, and then you'll give me something that I'll completely say isn't true, then we'll research it, and then I'll be wrong. Which is often anyway, so I'm used to it. So, Well, there you learned something new. But uh, I'd like for the focus to come back to that, maybe. I'm like, I'm dead-ass serious. I hate the look of 30 frames per second. Once you get used to it, again, it's fine. But I, I just don't know why we continue to make games prettier. I mean, maybe we'll get to a point where games can only get so much prettier... And then we'll have to kind of we'll kind of slowly catch up with consoles at least and get games to sixty 
because we'll kind of hit maybe like a some type of wall with graphics at the very least. No, I, th- I think they um they don't do it for time or budgetary constraints or something. I know the yeah. systems are capable of doing it, but the problem is, or I, the thing is, is you're you're either bumping it up in its graphical fidelity or you're bumping it up in its frames per second, but you're not doing both. Yeah, Samsung just released a monitor that's capable of projecting like up to a thousand frames per second. Your eye can't even perceive. Well, yeah, you can that many you can only get so the far. The monitor can do it, but it's a 1080p monitor. They couldn't make yeah. a 4K monitor that could run that kind of frames per second type of stuff for some reason. And the Rerez, which is one of my shows that I watch on YouTube tested the monitor out and he he just found it to be unbelievable like the and he's like when he tried comparing it to the 4k tv and the monitor he's like ultimately if it was a choice between a 4k tv or a monitor of equivalent size running you know that many frames per second i probably am still just slightly inching towards the 4k tv just because of the colors and so on oh yeah but overall like the uh, frames per second definitely makes a big deal. My thing is, is it comes down to graphics. And ultimately, there are games on the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo that are ridiculously fun to play, and they look like shit. So I'm not too concerned with how a game looks. Yeah, me neither. And the thing about it is, is it, it, it is possible. If you look at PC games, why don't we have a modular setting system for consoles? And I think it's a lot of it is because a lot of console players today still are, in a sense, casual gamers. And again, we've talked about all this before. That's not the case for everybody. But and I don't know an exact number. Here we go again with the uh, <laughs> the bar joining in. Yeah, but I think a big reason behind it is because they know people don't really care, and people care more about a game looking nicer. But just give me an option. Get like they did it with um, Tomb Raider for the PS Pro when it was when they introduced a PS4 patch for Tomb Raider, they had an option. Would you want a better frame rate or better graphics? Make that at the start of every game. It is not that hard. They do it on PC builds of games all the time where you can just change the settings. If you don't want the fucking textures on the walls to look as nice, you can drop them a bit, and boom, you're pulling more frames. And just have that option. The game starts up, boop. He's like. You want 60 frames or you want you want uh, uh, whatever, better graphics. You hit one of them, boom, you're good to go. And then now you're fine. Because even when it comes to like shooters, you'd want 60 frames over 30 because you have more time. Again, it's very minimal, but it, it just it feels better, especially since shooting with a controller in general doesn't feel as good as if you were already on a computer. And most games, most shooters are at 60. Overwatch is at 60. Siege, I think, is at 60 because they have all the models look like fucking Play-Doh on the, on the PlayStation. Um, but I'd rather... Oh, hey, Final Fantasy proc. Someone found a dungeon. I'd, I'd just rather that it at least be an option. I'd love to see that moving forward. And maybe, as again, as consoles get better, 60 frames will be more of a thing we'll just see regularly because, again, consoles will just get better. And I hope that the focus just maybe we'll see that kind of a shift in the paradigm because graphics can only get so much better. And then we'll get to a point where we'll come to a focus of frames over graphics. And again, like you said, it can only go so high. And I think that a lot of it's also refresh rate. If you have a 144 hertz monitor, or 120 hertz monitor, um, you need to be pulling the frames in order to see that difference. Because if your frames that you're pulling are falling in between the refresh rate of the monitor, it's not doing shit for you. So uh, it all it all depends on what what you're working with, what equipment you're working with. So so that's the kind of the answer to that one. Sean, do you have something you'd like to see as an improvement to gaming real quick just so we can answer the question for I like you? it when they release a game for the game to be finished. Okay. It's a good start. Yeah, maybe not you pulling know, out content to be games, used as DLC, stuff like that. Fully tested games. Yeah. I I do I do agree. Complete. That's a good start. I mean, uh, way back in the day, we released finished games. So <laughs> I think that's a an interesting prospect to get back to. Like when you're selling a game, it's a, it's a finished game. Yeah. Okay. That's a good answer. All right. And to move a little bit forward, uh, what do we think? 
we could see to make gaming a better form of entertainment. And I think that doesn't mean like for watching, but just for the person playing in general. And I think, again, that comes down to hardware because a lot of it's creative choices. A game will be good based on the team behind the game. A good team can make a game run well on anything if they properly develop the game. They just has to all be done. I think a lot of that comes down to the team behind the game. Uh, now, if you're referring to something like an esports, I mean, I think a lot of that is just involvement, getting the people that are watching the, the esport involved. Like if you look at Overwatch League, they have a team for practically every state, teams for other countries and stuff like that. You're giving people something to attach themselves to and see in the thing while they're watching. You're giving some a, a way for people to be involved, a way for people to tune in and, and have an attachment to something that's happening and instead of just viewing the game. And I think well, the way Overwatch League works, I think, is really good. I may not be a big fan of Overwatch itself, so I don't watch it, but I like the steps they're taking for esports as a whole because I think what they're doing is really cool, and I like the idea behind it. Even with the idea of you can buy the jerseys for your characters based on the team that you want. For just for your in-game, so you could represent your team, almost like real life. Oh, look at that. I mean, again, you see Blizzard taking ideas from other players or other uh, areas and just putting them together in a good, in a smart way, which is what Blizzard does best. They steal ideas. Uh, Blizzard fanboys out there. Um, so we're basically just seeing the NFL for video games. And again, it's cool. I have nothing against it. I think it's really cool, and I'm a big fan of esports. I've been watching LCS, which is the league, the league tournaments, for again the last fucking six years and i still tune in even if i don't play the game because i want to see how well my teams are doing see what the rosters are see what's going uh the drama that comes with it with the personalities that are presented and all that shit i love esports i think it's really cool so um if in that regard sam i think a lot of it is atta is attachment giving people watching at home something to attach themselves to and something for them to root for or even or ways to represent the, their teams i think is the best way to make gaming in the form of a viewing entertainment better so and sean well gaming is a form of viewing entertainment is destroying gaming as a form of home entertainment so there's got to be some sort of fucking reconciliation there at some point i mean it depends again a lot of it falls down to the developers behind the game i don't think esports well, developers are making choices based off of what these habits that people are developing and those habits are costing us in quality of the game. Look at the difference between Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5. You have a massive audience that adores that game as a technical fighter. They buy the game as a technical fighter. They take part in the game as a technical fighter. So Capcom comes up with the idea to make it a fucking casual game next time around. Yeah. But... And it ruins the game. Yeah. And it, so if it... you, you can't do both. You gotta. You know, pick a path and stick the path. There are games that people try and make technical, like uh, Smash Brothers, which technically, which you know, isn't, but they still find ways to compete with it. That's fine, but they haven't taken Smash and actually tried to make it a fucking technical fighter. They're not doing that. So why would you? It just doesn't make sense to me why you would abandon a player base like that. But the reason they're doing it is because you have so many of these tards that are like, "I want to watch video games." They were never meant to be watched. They're meant to be played, experienced, shared. It's obnoxious to me that the whole industry has to change because now people like to watch things on YouTube. And I, it's interesting because again, I think. It depends on who you're you're talking about. Because if you look at Overwatch, which again from from the start was designed to be something that was both made to be played and then um, eventually fell into the realms of esports. And again, everyone has their issues with games and stuff like that. And um, I don't think it will be the downfall of games. We again, what we've talked about this before, especially when we talked about Battlefront Two and the whole loot box controversy is we'll see a shift definitely because we're already seeing it and i think that shift will continue to go the way it's going until there is a recoil which always ends up happening in one form or another and because uh, media art always likes to kind of fall back to a center because it's always dealing with consumers um almost always and i think the biggest thing is we'll see a change in triple a which sucks because triple a is where the licenses are Triple A's are where the adored franchises are, and Triple A is where all the stuff that is most most likely influenced with nostalgia. That's where all that lies, 
But I think we'll always see, again, a leveling happen when it comes to just the games being developed. People will start to see in the market that this isn't wanted. And you'll see something that promises the opposite of that, what people do want, sprout up. It'll get popular. And then and then the people that are making the shit that people don't want will see that this is popular because it's giving what people actually want. And then, hey, it, it flip-flops. But we'll always see something like that. Again, it will just teeter back and forth. And I don't think, as, as much as it sucks, I don't think it's going to go away for a bit. We're going to have to see a massive nope. recoil in... And I have nothing wrong with people watching games because a lot of people just don't have the fucking time. A lot of people prefer sit down, spend an hour or two a day watching something on their couch or chilling out and watching a personality play something or watching a group of personalities compete in something over sitting down and partaking in it themselves because they don't have the investment or the time to invest, basically. And because, again, video games are quite an investment, especially as you grow older, families start to sprout up. You have to put attention to other uh, priorities in your life. Uh, it just it becomes, it becomes fucking difficult. And uh, so I it understand. Is difficult. I, I get it. People don't play football, but they watch football. I don't get it because football is for losers. But I like <laughs> playing it on playgrounds. I just can't stand watching a fucking sport. It's boring. I like hockey, but you don't see me fucking watching hockey games. I'll watch a little bit reel of highlights and be like, well, that was interesting and move on with my life. I like playing things. I like doing stuff. I'm not somebody that sits and likes watching other people do things. It's just not entertaining to me. But it, it boggles me that it's so lucrative to, to for people to watch video games get played that the people that actually play the video games have to suffer for it. Again. Because the industry is following the money. And that, to me, makes me very angry at the assholes that are watching stuff, even though it's technically not entirely their fault or entirely anyone's fault, really. And a lot but of I still times... want to call them douchebags and punch them in the face, yeah. even though you know, they may not necessarily be doing something wrong just because I am an angry, bitter person. A lot of the times, especially with certain games, like things that you see, such as League of Legends or things that have depth to them, Dota... Um, Overwatch, things that you master. Again, we talked about the, the time it takes to commit to something and fully master it as a skill. Um, there's always people that will be better than you. And a lot of people like to see the God, best of the... So. Yeah, a lot of people like to see the best of the best combat, which is another reason, well, again, why sports. I mean, you can go out and play football with your kid, but you're not going to see intense plays when you have two sets or two again two sets of people that are fantastic at something duking it out and i don't know man i think it looks pretty fantastic if somebody sacks a six-year-old yeah exactly <laughs> breaks his leg he's like you're out for the season son <laughs> um fucking touchdown but, uh, yeah, right, I, bitch I th what i don't think cry your mother <laughs> I think a lot of that is it comes down to seeing people that are immensely good at something. Another reason why like things like speed runs are so good, watching someone just absolutely get so good that they demolish what something you grow, grew up with. They find ways to break the game and finish them. Um, you're watching people that are masters at their craft work, and that is interesting to some people. And that's why I think a lot of it, especially with esports, esports, everything like that, as games get more in depth, and then the time that you have to invest to master something becomes grander, you'll see this again continue to sprout. Now, companies make dumb decisions. Capcom's retarded. I mean, and they they've been, uh, they they've had their issues over time. Not many people like them, and I think what they did with the Street Fighter V was stupid. Because again, like we said before, you want to have masters at a game, and as as easy as it is to create things like upsets when a game is technically more casual friendly, you want to see the best of the best rise, and you can't do that in a game that's been catered to casuals. So, and I understand entirely where you're going, and I think the same exact thing for that. Uh, when it comes to Street Fighter Four to Street Fighter Five, they fucked that game over. And so you make games for casuals. And games for people who who and don't again, sit down, and, and that's play exactly what we see right now. Minutes. That's exactly and what they don't we do see that. Right now. They try and fucking do both at the same time, and they screw everybody. And that, but like, 
I, I mean, I can't. You can't like take Street this. Street Fighter Five isn't 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 no. It's but not. That's but you have Street one Fighter example here. It's not. It, it's terrible. I well, know it's awful. It fucking sucks. Terrible. But we have like one example there. But then you have other games again that have sprouted up that focus on again the technical achievement of pulling off a hard combo. You will always see something come out of somewhere that will give what people want, and we start to well, see that, those... yeah, like Dark Souls and Demon Souls and shit like that. That's cool, but it's what not a fuck? spectator game. Oh no, they're trying not. to turn it into a spectator game with what? Um, Twitch shit like that. Well, I mean, it it's not a game at that point. It's just a spectator. You're just watching someone. I mean, you're not watching a lot of it with watching. But they're people. changing these one player experiences. With the idea that they will be broadcast as a spectator. That's the thing, man. Games is a visual service, is a visual medium. But in what in know. what concept has that changed Dark Souls though? I've seen no change to Dark Souls that has has proven that that point. At least with Dark Souls. Now you see again you Oh no no, no 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 no. I'm not using Dark Souls as an example of a game that's changed. I'm just oh. was using it as an example of one that hasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. And again, it it's you'll always see companies do dumb shit because companies are greedy. They want money, they follow money, and there's always got to be a balance when you're hunting that. Again, everyone wants money. I have nothing wrong with the company trying to make money as long as they don't nickel and dime the fuck out of you or try and follow or use predatory practices. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Blizzard loot boxes. No, I'm just playing around. <laughs> uh it's just that's my thoughts on it. I have nothing wrong with either side of it, and I think again, uh, we all here we love games, and that's why again Sean may may come off as a pretentious bastard, but it's because he loves what he plays. He loves seeing uh, his, these series, and he doesn't like them um, becoming worse. Uh, a la fucking Street Fighter Five, and a lot of people agree that Street Fighter Five is is not. A technical game it's so we're not just spewing bullshit here this is stuff that's actually going down and um that's so that's kind of our thoughts on it anything else you want to you want to say sean before we move on to the next question no i think that's about it it'd be nice to see them stop shitting on the people that made them multi-billion dollar companies in the first place i mean we were the players that made street fighter 2 Awesome. We were the players that that spread it around and talked about it in school. We were the ones that took a game that was essentially just a handful of special moves per character and created the combo system in the first place, using you know game exploits and frame flaws and shit like that. We were the ones that came up with all that stuff, and then Camp Capcom took our usage of those things and said hey let's make a system out of it and over the years the game got more and more technical and more and more fun or and challenging at the same time but you can still sit down you know fucking middle school style or elementary school style and have a little battle with your friend on the console and nothing bad happens you know it's fun both you can still play the 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 fighters it's a lot deeper of a system now which is you know, different for some folks, but I mean, if you appreciate the people that gave you the ability to make Street Fighter 3 and Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 and all the million iterations, I don't understand why you would shit on them. I just would like to see that stop. But I mean, this is, again, this whole conversation just retreads a lot of what we've already talked about. I'm just going to go back to my, I'd like to see them have finished complete games on release date. That would be fantastic. Yeah. And give me an start, option. Let's start there. Give me an option to gain to the game to look slightly not as pretty and have sixty frames on console. Because PC, no issue. I can play Assassin's Creed, everything at ultra sixty frames. Fucking my eyes can melt. You play it at plus ultra. Yes, uh, that's that's actually the setting. That'd be fucking cool if they did something like that. I actually just thought about <laughs> that. Like instead of like ultra or plus ultra, that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Sam. Let us know what you. Uh, <laughs> give us an idea. Hopefully we answered it properly. Um, so let's move again forward. Let's move over to... Um, I was The segue got fucking destroyed, so we'll just go normal. Because I was going to jump over to Funny Guy's question. <laughs> but segue got killed, so we'll leave it. So... <laughs> Fuck me. I didn't silence my phone. I didn't silence my phone. How's it been quiet for so long? It's been a whole hour and I hadn't gone off. Okay. So let's move on over to Hell Teacher Loki's question. That's all right. My controller kept making noise. <laughs> so, 
Uh, again, Loki, thanks for the question. We know you recently joined the Discord. Just come say hi with us. Man, I think... I know he's, like, really far ahead of us, like, in, in future land, so I think he lives in Australia. I'm not entirely sure on that. It's either Australia or Europe. Please correct is me. Is Australia Loki. future land now? It is future land because they live, like, 12 hours ahead of us. So they're technically in tomorrow. That's their future land uh, where where everything's dangerous and kangaroos kick people in the face. So got to be careful yeah, in future Australia, land. everything wants to eat you. Exactly. So I think it's that. I just know he lives because when it's nighttime, it's morning for him. Uh, I think that's I think that's Loki. I again I I, I apologize if that isn't you, but um, I'm glad that you joined the Discord. Just come say hi to us, and we're gonna go ahead and talk now. This question we might we might get into some deep talk here, but so he basically Loki says, two guys, fingers deep, two fingers deep, guys. I would kill to hear your look back at Hunter Hunter for each arc at least from the spider arc and all the arcs that follow. I love the anime review segment of the previous episode. So, yeah, we, whenever we finish or we all sit down to watch something and we're all good with it, we'll usually talk about it and review something. It doesn't have to be anime. Sometimes we do movies <laughs> and shit like that, but it just ends up being porn, anime, you know. Yeah, porn, um uh uh bestiality girls for uh the dark chocolate edition. Fantastic 10 bestiality out of 10. Bestiality girls gone wild. Yeah. yeah. So, in Willy Wonka land. Okay, so first let's talk about Hunter Hunter. Sean, I want you to let let everyone know what you think about Hunter Hunter, and I'll provide my opinion. We'll first talk about that, and then we'll talk about a little bit about the arcs. I have actually a list pulled up of all of them. So, <laughs> I love Hunter Hunter. Yeah. I adore the characters. I love the show. I think it's a good deconstruction without throwing the deconstruction ness in your face. You watch things like the Watchmen film, or you watch things like uh, uh, Madoka Magica. You know, those are very in your face with their deconstruction. They're very much, look, let me show you this concept that you're used to and familiar with and how it doesn't work. And Hunter x Hunter is much more sly with how they kind of point out that the shonen genre is extraordinarily flawed and doesn't work. And then they show you this just morally bankrupt society that's upside down where there's these power monger hunters who can do whatever the fuck they want as soon as they get that license. People die by the hundreds in this show constantly. Yeah. If you are a normal person, if you are not a Nen user, you are probably going to get disemboweled Can someone by say genocide? Yeah, it's just like the hunters do whatever they want whenever they want. And the only ones that police them... Or is the uh, the other zodiacs hunters. and are, the uh, the other hunters? Yeah. The hunters police themselves, and uh, they do a horrible job at it. So people yeah, die do. in this show, all over the place. Hunters die, people die. It's just constant because when you have super powered, you know, human beings running around and nobody holds them in check, which is typically what happens in ninety nine point nine percent of your shonen, <laughs> people are going to die by these scores, and that's what happens. But what I really like is there's this. This whole world is viewed through the eyes of a completely blank slate, a 100% neutral party. His sense of good, his sense of evil, completely neutral, gone. Gone is just naive to everything, so every time he comes across something, he doesn't have some sort of previous notion of what he should think about it. So he looks at everything completely neutral, and he doesn't go all like well, you and I, we've got our moral... Compass. and ethical boundaries on how we've grown up but he when he walks into something it gives me like this interesting viewpoint on how maybe the evil is not quite so evil and maybe how the good isn't necessarily as shiny and wonderful and i don't know i just i really love it i love the depth of the stories i love the characters i'm a little pissed off they killed one of my favorite guys but uh, leorio is still in there and leorio is my homeboy yep. lawyer for president 2018 <laughs> okay. um I love the show. I like all the arcs. Greed Island was particularly fun. Okay. Um, Since but the- I, I don't have a favorite arc. I think, although I did like when uh, Leorio punched Gon's dad in the face. Yeah, that was fuck fucking that, fantastic. <laughs> punched him in the face. In that all honesty, great. some of like the better like tension and like some of the better. I mean, I can't say because there's so much good in the show, but like I love. And we can't, because he's. I think he's not done with it, so we have to be careful um, with what we with what we talk about. 
but the Chimera Ant arc is especially really good. I love yeah, a lot. They move of a little it. too quickly through it, I think, in some parts. But well, yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, um, I like the it, tension presented. Again, we're not going to talk too spoily, uh, spoilery. Yeah. Uh, we'll just present. Oh, so nothing about Natero and whatnot. Oh no, no. We're I will say that Hisoka is the best, uh, best villain ever since Vicious. Like, yeah, he's cool. He's so perfect. Yeah, Hisoka is a really cool, a really good character. I like him as a antagonist. And again, like you were saying with Gon, I love Gon. I love Kilua. I love the friendship that they have amongst each other. I love that that's tested multiple times throughout the show as well. And I like that it develops. A lot of times you see in a shonen, they're just friends and they stay and they just stay friends mostly. Sometimes you'll see problems brought up, but a lot of parts you see that they're either already they're already together or they meet through and then they've been each with each other maybe like three episodes. Hey, we're best friends now. And I like that this is it feels like a real friendship. It's something that gets tested. It's something where you, both parties or both sides of this friendship have their own um interests and sometimes they conflict and i think that's really cool i like those two characters i like their the way they i like the strength they inherit how how they get stronger uh, i really like the power system in this show the nen and how it operates i like how it's explained i like how it it's fairly in depth yeah, yeah again i love how it's it, it it feels like it's something that they they put a lot of time into building it they it makes sense you understand it um, I like that it's not presented right away. It's not like, oh, this dude ate a fruit. He's got stretchy arms. It's like these kids, again, neutral point of view, they thought that they were strong. And then, holy shit, we got a whole new thing like Super Saiyan 1 coming in here uh, of, a, of a whole new power system that we all have to learn now. And I think that's really cool. Again, i try not to spoil too much. I, I, just, I keep thinking that I don't know how far he, he is into the show, but I think you have a really good time ahead of you. Very fun. He so you no, know, he's seen the spider arc. So they're in Nen. If he's talking about spider arc, uh, so they they're in Nen, but we're not. We're anywhere. Refresh me. Why is it called the spider arc? Which one is that? The uh, the 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 spy the, the I don't know what they're called, but the spider gang. They have like that. Some of the uh, the people the that, one that the um, people that genocide part of. Yeah, and the people that genocided um or one of them genocided all of uh what's his face's clan with the. Because they had like the glowing eyes, so they used him to sell him. What's that dude's name? Well, he wasn't the only one, but yeah. Um, you're talking about the one that Hisoka wanted to to kill. I forget his name. How do I forget his name? Uh, Re starts with an R. Uh, R- Rigolo or Rigolo or something like that. <laughs> Rigolo. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. No, it's Kur- Kurapika. That's what it is. Kurapika. Kurapika is the good guy. Yeah, that's what I'm the... talking about. The dude that his oh, whole. I thought you were talking about whole... the one that. No, not uh, the bad guy. Not the, the bad guy. leader of the gang. Yeah, no, not the bad guy. The, the dude that oh. gets his whole clan genocided. <laughs> yeah. Rolo? Was it Rolo? I, uh, I don't the, um, the, oh, wait a second. The spider arc, doesn't that, in, aren't they called the phantom trope? That's phantom, the phantom something trope. Yeah, the phantom spider trope. I know they all have spider tattoos and they have a number. Phantom. Yeah, I think I think his name is Crollo, C-H-R-O-L-O. Crollo, that's it. Yeah, Crollo. In the manga, dude, he comes... Dude, Krollo killed he so almost killed Hisoka. Like he came so close. Hisoka finally they they fought in the uh the tower, the top of the tower. Uh Hisoka finally got to fight him, which is something he'd been trying to do for so long. Yeah. Cuz he had to wait for him to get his powers back. So he finally gets his powers back, gets him at the top of the tower. They're doing a legal fight and Hisoka got so close and then Krollo used that puppeteering ability and took the crowd that was watching and had like you know, 250,000 people go into the arena and tear Hisoka into little pieces. And the only thing that saved him was that bungee gum shit. Like he moved his body parts around or something like that. And basically had that other chick from the Phantom Troop. sew him back together. Yeah. Uh, I also like that the, the show it, I mean, it doesn't go in depth into building at least, I mean, it builds the the political climate kind of of the world with the hunters and how to become a hunter and what how, what hunters are capable of and the the bad guys of the area. But I like that Very the much. the the locations are diverse. We moved through a couple areas. I thought the Great Island Dark was pretty cool too. Um, York again, no, New City, yeah, North York New City was cool. 
Oh, stupid name. <laughs> but yeah, you're no. fucking stupid name. I love the test to become hunters. Um I every time the world is just so lethal. Everything yeah. just kills you in that in that world. It's so strange. Yeah. Definitely again, you got a huge storm coming, honey, uh, Mr. Loki. Um, so I'm excited for you to hit us back up when you do get through it. We both love this show. Um I have not read it, but I watched all the 2011 series. I know you're talking about that's what you were watching. Um, the animation's fantastic. A lot of even the, the the tournament arc. Once you get there, the, a lot of the fights are really cool. And seeing Gon grow as a character and become um, not not necessarily more jaded, but in a way just becoming more adept to the world that surrounds him. It's really cool. Uh, just experience seeing him grow as a character, become older, get stronger, learn new things, make friends, all this stuff. Really cool. Really cool. And I want definitely you to let us know once you finish it what you thought of the Chim- Chimera Antark because it, it, it definitely had its moments. So, De- definitely. I'm going to miss someone. I can't say who, but. Oh, and where do you find out where the, right, now we know the this- world is in now? Yeah, it's fucked. So. Again, thank well, you for the question. Well, aren't fucking just does so much. Yeah, you you'll learn a lot. Again, definitely hit us up once you finish it. Let us know if you guys, if any of you out there are looking for a decent shonen anime that's pretty good, and you haven't heard of Hunter Hunter, definitely check it out. Uh, the, again, the 2011 series looks the best. Uh, there's a little bit missing here and there, but overall, it's a it compared to the manga, it's pretty faithful. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking it out. So finally. Uh, we're going to move on to Funny Guy's question. Again, Funny Guy, I love you, brother. And I'm so sorry I missed this question. We missed it last week. And I, I don't know. Actually, it's been a month. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. I think I saw it once, but I was like at work, and I never checked the mailbag again. So i I terribly sorry. That's all I do is apologize. But we're going to read your question now. We saved the best for last. Um, And, it, of course, it's a fucking meme. But uh, he says, so I'm not much into anime, but I finished a couple series, and I'm in the middle of arguably the best anime of all time, Sean. He says, the best anime (laughs) of all time. Even partway through, I I would recommend this great anime. Dubbed Corey in the House. Again, fantastic show. What anime series would you guys recommend to a non-weeb pleb like myself? I definitely liked the the arc in Corey in the House where... um, uh, he watches his family die. Again, very yeah, powerful really set, very one. powerful, and I cannot recommend the the development of this character of Corey as he moves through and learns how to become um, a magical girl. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, a very good deconstruction of the U.S. political climate. And I liked it when he was in the house. That was like my favorite part. Indeed, indeed, he did. He did high five Obama. And I thought yeah, that was a cool cameo. Penis. Yeah, yeah. The, this show does get quite raunchy, so I do not recommend watching it with uh, children. Yeah, that's why it's a Disney Channel exclusive, though. They, you know, they really handle the hard stuff. Exactly. Yeah, they they hit the heavy hitters too. Um, he does. He does experience um, defining his sexuality as a man as he grows, and uh, just experimenting and learning what it is, what it does mean to be a magical girl. So I highly recommend Corey in the House. If you guys have not seen it, definitely some of the top 10 anime of uh, someone. Yeah. The top 10 anime of the last decade. Also um, the best Miley Cyrus cameo I've ever seen. Was she on Curry in the House? <laughs> I watched like one episode. Yeah, well, I watched I mean, like one the, fucking the, episode of that Disney show. The Talking Vagina. Talking Vagina. Part the, yeah, yeah, that was her. That was yeah, Miley Cyrus? yeah, I thought that was amazing. Man, she is that such a Cyrus. good character actor. I can't. She believe, is. Do you think? Do you think she probably? Uh, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, just go watch Corey in the House. Whatever. Fuck it. Uh, for anime that you guys w- that I would recommend to a non weeb, um, I think Boku no Hero is a good start. Uh, it's not very long, and it's typical shown in action. So if you like action, you like well written characters. Uh, it has its moments where it's funny, and overall the animation oh. is very good. Um, and there's a dub for it, and the dub's actually pretty good. I'm surprised how good the dub is. So if you don't want to read, you want to watch a good action show that has good characters, My Hero Academia. Um, it's on Hulu. You can watch it on Hulu for for the sub. Uh, I don't know where else you'd find it subbed or dubbed. I mean, at least 
But it is on Hulu. I don't know, man. If I was starting telling somebody it was a non-weeb, I'd probably give them something like Cowboy Bebop or Trigun to start with. Uh, but or I, but even think, better yet, I'd say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yeah, Full Metal Alchemist. Good. The Trigun problem with like the problem with Cowboy like Bebop. old shows is I've heard from people that like shit stuff that looks old sometimes turns people off especially because again i don't give a fuck that's a weeb thing to get turned off by old stuff that's not a non-cartoon watcher thing what are you talking about people like, like if something there, is in 480p there are so many people that i'm like hey dude you need to watch Gungrave. it's really really good and then because he's only watched new anime he's only watched stuff from like the last 10 years uh, i i tell him to watch that no let me rephrase the most recent thing he's watched was bleach Let's put it that way. That's the that's old. No, an that's the anime oldest thing watcher, he's watched. though. I don't think yeah. funny guys watched anything. So, so if somebody's not familiar with it, then why would they care if it doesn't have all the digital in, shiny? Because it's used in to seeing that anyway. Because it's in fucking 480p, dude. <laughs> that's why you they care. The, you, well, well, boogie. First, well, the Cowboy Bebop is in is in a, is full screen. I, it's you still get that full screen on Crunchyroll. It looks like fucking garbage. Trigun probably looks much better because it's not as old, but still. Like, what do you mean? Trigun, Trigun's older than Cowboy Bebop. Is it? Yes. Oh, I, I haven't seen Absolutely. Uh, I've only seen bits Trigun's of Cowboy Bebop. Trigun's from like Bebop. the, the late 90s, Trigun. early 2000s. Okay. Well, hey, if you want something that looks like 480p, you got, you got, well, I, I'm not dismissing the shows because I'm sure they're good. I respect Sean's uh, 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 opinion. That word was hard to get out because I don't. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Uh, but yeah, if. If you're looking for something modern... Ignore him. Those are good shows. If you're not used to watching anime, they're a good start. Cowboy Bebop is like a, a crime action yeah. thriller mystery very show. Very stylish. It's very, very good. Very stylish. Extremely stylish. If Music's you like awesome. Music, anime yeah. is awesome. Then, uh, Trigun is like a, a space western in the least corny way I could probably try and <laughs> put it. There's nothing corny about this show, but it, that sounds retarded, so I guess it's not the best thing, but... Uh, to, to to describe it, but Trigun's fucking amazing, and it's got great characters. I'm a Wolfwood lover for life. One of my favorite characters. I won't say any spoilers, but I'll always love Wolfwood. And uh, Fullmetal Alchemist is a grounded level of high fantasy. You don't have dragons and giant monsters, but you definitely do live in a world of fantasy where there's a sort of magic available. And there is inhuman things, but it's very deep right if you're gonna watch fma watch brotherhood don't watch the yeah, original don't watch the original watch brotherhood no. um i will say that was his name um we won't say what happened to him but the the character that was always happy and excited about his daughter was it reeve it was, yeah yeah i know what was his about. name that's fine we don't have to, we don't him, have the name drop. but they spent yeah they spent more time with him in the original fma and they spent more time on like I think character building adventures in the original FMA than they did with Brotherhood, which is about the only real downside that I've got to it. I yeah. say that Brotherhood is still a superior story. Uh, also, the other big things that you've might have heard before, if you're looking for something that's funny and is just overall a good spectacle, something you can turn your mind off to and watch, One Punch Man is a good recommendation. Uh, if Fooly you haven't Cooley. seen that, Fully Cooley is also in that field. Anything by Studio Trigger is really good. Kill a Kill, Gran Logan. Uh, actually, kill a kill. Kill a kill's a bit of a bit yeah. Of a, might be a, 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 if you uh, like. That's kind of an advanced. If you like semi-naked girls, hey, kill a kills up your alley. Uh, it, but the, the, it's not done in a titillating fashion. It's done. In, it's it, it's kill titillating. Kill is more to make fun scenes. of other. It is making fun of, but they is. still they still make the scenes titillating. They, the animation was so sloppy that I don't know how you could find that in, in titillating. Well, they but they still focus on those parts of the body though. Like, when she's transforming, you cannot tell me that that transformation is not designed to be fucking titillating. Don't you fucking dare. Go back and watch it. She has, like, 19, early 90s triangle Madonna boobs? No, I don't know. No, I'm talking about the whole process when her little, her pants literally, Uh, like, pull up and her thighs show and her, you see, like, her vagina tighten. Well, it doesn't actually tighten, but, like, the clothes get tighter on her body. (laughs) That shit is designed to be titillating. Don't Uh, tell me it's not. Gurren Lagann's really good. Gurren Lagann's good. Don't grow attached to characters. (laughs) Uh... Yeah, Jesus, Studio Trigger's got good stuff. I hated both both Kill a Kill and Gurren Lagann when I started them. And I kept going for, I can't even tell you because I'm not a quitter. And I was <laughs> glad I did both of them. Yeah, they're good. Um, I had to be coached through uh, that one Soul Eater, was yeah. it? Yeah, oh, Soul Eater. With the, with the, 
Yeah, was it the, is that the one with the partners? The yeah, one that wielded Soul the Eater. weapon? Yeah. Dude, Soul Leader, I couldn't stand that show for like 14 episodes. And then finally, halfway through the first season, it started to get good. And I was like, all right, I can handle this. Yeah. Um, and then I stuck in. Again, other commons that you might get recommended. Attack on Titan is good. Tension, if yeah. you like tension and like a thriller kind of, I'd say Attack on Titan is good. Um, Knights of Sidonia is Attack on Titan in space. in space. That one was good. Except it might throw you off the fact that it looks like kind of doo-doo because the CG isn't the best. Uh, it's a specific style of CG, yeah. but I think they had it polished about halfway through the first season. Okay, that's a couple. Attack on Titan, if you want comedy and just like crazy over the top spectacle action one punch man uh if you're looking for a decent one punch man is hilarious yeah, stupid if... hilarious yeah. uh, same thing goes for mob psycho mob psycho is a little bit crazier in the with the comedy and some of it might not um synergize i guess with you because it's a lot of it's uh like societal shit so st- stuff flies over people's heads a lot same thing here like i didn't get half the jokes but um you also so that's one punch man is a good a really good start because again it's not it's not too in depth there's not too much there's not it's just a cool action show with a dude that's completely fucking overpowered and it's hilarious so one punch man is a good option um boku no hero is good if you are looking for something that's just a typical action show that has good animation and good moments if you're looking for stuff that's stylish i'd stick with uh you could go to um cowboy bebop music's fantastic all that's really good um and then again gungrave as well i'd say even gungrave again i haven't seen a lot of it but it has its moments where it, you can consider it's that so stylish good. too uh, what, what else very did we... much like good fellas meets devil may cry what else did we fucking say i think that was it i think well they, i mean they're listening to it they they can yeah, write they it do. down or rewind yeah. it fuck it so there you go uh if that if that question was serious at least the last part of it funny guy those are some good answers that something that might you might enjoy i think you'd like one punch man because you, you just for the, the way from what i've talked to you with or the times that i've talked to you, you just seem like that that type of person that might like something that's completely over the top action that's funny i think you might like something like that um so there's that so those are the that's the mailbag an hour and 20 minutes in so we might just make that the main topic and i'll name it like well because we spent the most time talking about esports i don't fucking know <laughs> we'll f- I'll figure it out in post. But again, guys, thank you so much for your questions. If you want a question answered on the podcast, you want to hear our opinions about something, feel free to either join the Discord, drop it in the Discord uh, mailbag segment. You can hit us up on Twitter with the uh, hashtag uh, TP mailbag, or you can hit us up on the email Thought Patrol Cast. <laughs> Get us up on the uh, Thought Patrol email, thoughtpatrolcast at gmail.com. And um, I'll take any questions I receive from all those areas and compile them and put them together uh, for this for the show. So definitely feel free to ask us whatever you guys want. We'll answer pretty much any question. We don't really have any filters here on this show. Um, so. Again, thanks you all of you what? guys for asking us questions. I don't know what <laughs> you're just, talking about. I I've use opened... a filter all the time. Yeah, it is angry, man. <laughs> That's my filter. <laughs> I look at everything through a blood red lens. Uh, game segment. I, I have an urban dictionary where we can do some urban. Dictionary. I need to get back to fucking finding stories for you, Sean, because I like that segment. Um, but we're not going to continue with the shit list today because I'd rather have more people for it. Um, so I found just a word we could talk about. So Sean, I'm sure you've heard about this. So you probably already know this, but we got, we got cankles. Do you know the Ugh. blessing that the Lord has graced us with? That is the cankle. Yeah. You know who has fine cankles? No. Princess Ronda Peach. Rousey? What? Princess Peach. I don't know. I thought Ronda Rousey would probably have cankles. I don't know. <laughs> Princess Peach. You look like a cankle. You look like a cankle kind of girl. What happened? Well, thick girls tend to have cankles for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. It's her design. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know what a cankle is, since me and Sean already know, it's the area of the female leg where the calf meets the foot in an uh, abrupt, non-tapering terminus. Medical cause. Is it specifically female? I thought it was. I thought <laughs> cankles were like a universal. This thing is saying female. Do... We actually even have. Oh. A, we even have a medical cause. The reasoning behind this is adipose tissue surrounding the soleus tendon, probably con- conge- congenital, worsened by weight gain and improved in parents only by boots from the English calf, meaning wide portion of the lower leg, and ankle, meaning slender joint of leg with foot. 
That's yeah, a well, the, the whole point is like the the leg's supposed to end somewhere. It's supposed to end before the ankle. It narrows in gracefully, becomes something else, you know, an ankle, which then connects to the foot. But these people with fucking cankles, it's just leg all the way down to the yeah. foot. It's fucking weird and gross looking yeah. in your mutants, what? all of you. <laughs> Their entire body is thick with two C's. Oh, Jesus. I almost hit my cat yeah. with my pen. I dropped it and the cat was okay. Maybe there. they're not gross and, and or anything, but it still freaks me out. So, okay, I, cankles, cankles are freaky. We got a, we got a couple of good ones for cankle, so we're gonna hit the alphabetical list as we always do. And we have a cankered cooter. So what? Sean, so we have a cankered cooter. I want you. To, we're gonna actually start hitting some questions here. Hit me. What you got for a question? I don't. Well, a cooter's a vagina. Uh huh. Good, good. You're using context clues. I like it. I don't want to know what a canker. I don't think you understand. Like the where <laughs> my mind is going with this may be worse than the definition. <laughs> hey, good. Come on, ask a question, boy. Keep them coming, or keep one coming at least. Give me one question. Uh, Narrow it down. Is, is it an <laughs> overly fat vagina? It is not an overly fat vagina. I don't even know what that would look oh, like. God damn it. What would an overly fat vagina look like? That sounds weird. I can't even imagine that. Oh my, oh my god! It looks like roast <laughs> beef. That's what it would look like. I'm sorry. I, 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 I've never done this before, but I'm going to say this now. I was wandering through an area in this game that I, I do in the background because it helps me think, and there's an <laughs> enemy called a dapper zombie, uh-huh. and it randomly strikes fashion model poses while yeah, it's fighting. you haven't done that quest? And while it's walking around. No, I haven't. A... And, he see, see, and the whole time he's talking to himself, saying, I feel so cultured and enlightened. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a funny quest line. This is Final Fantasy fourteen for all of you tuning in. Um, there's a quest line uh, that you... this some Some woman... Um, her her mentor is murdered, and you found out that he was resurrected, and he's now a dapper zombie. And in order to solve, like the people have been complaining about the zombies because they're like annoying the towns in the area. So you, the fate he's that you have, fate. yeah, the fate yeah. you have to go do is uh, you got to go just murder all these uh dapper looking zombies, and yeah, they just strike like flexing poses. It was a good quest. I liked it. It was fun. All right. I didn't get the quest. I just walked into the fate. Yeah. But I've never seen the problem. I've never seen the problem pose. with that quest is you have to do the fate. So if you're in the area and the fate's not there, you just gotta fucking sit there and wait until it comes up, which is annoying. You can't just start it. You have to wait till it, it pops up in the in the random queue. Again, Final Fantasy lingo. Some of you might not know, not know what the fuck we're talking about. All right, Sean. Cankered cooter. Ask me another uh, question. It's- it is not. Is it, is, it is not your cankle into a cooter. Oh, dude! Is that like foot foot sex? I think I found cooter? my. I, new, I think I found my new fetish. <laughs> no. Uh, it's funny when you said like a fat vagina. Like my mind went to interesting places with that. Uh, I don't think you get it, but cankered cooter. The top definition we got here is a nasty crusted vagina. So, any so much. any infection in a vagina is a So it's cankered. going off a of canker sore. It's not going yeah. off of cankles. It's yeah, not using cankles. A different, See, I, I threw you for a loop there. treating it like a cold sore. I threw you for a loop there. That, would, that, would have, that was actually going to be my next question before you actually gave the answer. Was I was like, oh, is it scabby and infected? <laughs> All right. Now, this one, I don't even know what the fuck it is, but this will be the last one. We have a canker blossom flap dragon. Canker... <laughs> A canker Blossom. Blossom Flap Dragon. Uh, does it have something to do with large vaginal lips? Um, I wish, but I think what we got here is a wanker dickhead silly twit used to describe someone in old, old English basically to degrade them. A nice change from the usual. And the, I don't understand anything you just said. <laughs> and the sentence is, Oi, you canker blo I don't know, uh, Sean. Don't. <laughs> There's so much wrong with what's happening right now. So I have no control over it. What kind of accent is this? Name it for me so I could try it. What, read it again. It's oi. Oi. You can't go blossom. I can't because my it's I cock- fucking suck. It's Cockney probably, yeah. Yeah, it's Cockney. So say this for me. Can you do a Cockney accent? At least attempt not one? Without, not without warming up. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta do like fucking vocal exercises to do it's no, one sentence. I, if I if I can't recall the exact nuances of a of a uh, you know an inflection or a vocal style, I'll go and listen to it for a few moments, and once I can figure out how they bend their R's or the only thing I notice vowels, the only thing I notice the only thing I know to say is the oi oi. That's the only thing I know. To well, do. I can I can do like. Uh, just no, do course, the street and fetch me a feather. No, I would. I don't think that would work. It's okay. It but was that's that's Cockney feather. One more use V's instead of R's. So that's that. Next time you like are that. next time you are particularly angry with someone, you have a way of degrading them. And one more time, the definition is wanker, dickhead, silly twit used to describe someone in Old English, basically to degrade them. A nice change from the usual. So there you go. A canker blossom flat okay, dragon. Rhyme slang is, is a fucking bitch anyway. That's a hard yeah. thing to learn. Who the fuck thought about this word? Interesting. Cockney rhyme slang or about what you're talking about? What I'm talking about. Oh, I was going to say rhyme slang was invented by the Cockney mob so that they could talk about criminal shit in front of cops and nobody would know. <sighs> about criminal shit. <laughs> yeah. You know the typical criminal shit. Uh, <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Whatever Christ. criminals talk about, <coughs> those fuckers. Excuse those me. dirty fuckers. I'm with... <laughs> I'd be less angry at criminals if they shared some of their ill-gotten wealth with me, but they don't, so fuck them. Have you heard about that thing that they're doing in some country in Europe where if they think <laughs> – <if they, laughs> In some country in Europe, this is happening. If they, is if, it 11? If they fucking – if they think the clothes that you're wearing are too expensive for like the way you look – Oh, yeah. They can take shit. They it's, can take uh, it Sweden. from you. Is yeah. that Sweden? I thought it was like Sweden, Auburn. Holland. Auburn or something like that? Is that a place in... No, it's, it's somewhere north of Germany and south of freezing if shit. You... I think it's Holland or something. Or, let's type it in. Cops. It's not Denmark. It's not It's not the Danish areas. Cops taking I think it's either Sweden or Holland. From people. Cops starting kids who look too poor for their clothes. Here we go. This is the exact article. New York Post. We got... Uh, this is in... Rotterdam, that's where it is. Where Which is in Holland, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a good guess. So I was right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> is Rotterdam in Holland, or were Again. you just? I I don't know. It's in the Netherlands, I it's think. It... I think it's in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, it's in the Netherlands. There you go. All of you, you all of you listeners out there, the point zero 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 one percent that live in Rotterdam, I apologize. So yeah, we're gonna move on. But yeah, they could like fucking yeah. So yeah, profiling by uh, look because they've yeah, got like, the a criminal contingent that likes to wear yeah. an expensive watch when they know for a fact that this person isn't working. And I've heard that they so made, now they've... if you're poor and your relatives give you a fucking Rolex, you better have a gift receipt or the yeah. cops are gonna take your shit <laughs> straight up. <laughs> I've never felt right about that that domain shit where law enforcement can just take whatever it is of yours if they don't think. You know, if they think there's probable cause because you don't look like you're, yeah. you know, you're too black to drive that car. Yeah. What happened until, too, I mean, again, this is only in the ridiculous. States, but what happened until innocent until proven guilty, right? You have to have yeah, due well, cause. No, don't get me wrong. They do that in the States, man. Oh, I'm sure there's, there's, I'm sure there's profiling all over the fucking place in the States, especially with. A, it's it, They, they get shut down a lot, but there are places, we even had it in Florida for a while, where they would stop people and if they found like a, a, a sack of money or or fucking anything that was really really nice and it didn't seem like that person should have it then the cops would just take it interesting and they they were legally allowed to do so and they shut that shit down all many many times and it seems to pop back up in various places for asshole reasons <laughs> um <clears throat> what was i gonna say I was going to say something, and you fucking kept talking. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, Okay, let's continue. Let's move on to our box office tops real quick. Talk about the movies that are pulling in bank in the theaters. At number one, we have Maze Run of the Death Cure. I have no idea about any of the lore of this world. I never read the books, never watched any of the movies. It's just a thing that com books. completely passed me by. So that's sitting at number one with 23 mil. Um... It's got a budget of $62 million, and it's in its first week, so it's only pulled 23 mil. At number two, we have Jumanji, sitting at $16 million for the weekend, pulling a total of $338 million. 
um, sitting at a budget of ninety million with a uh, on in its sixth week. At number three, we have Hostels. Now this is interesting. This movie is in its sixth week. But this week, it pulled $10 million, and it had a 1,658% increase from last week, where it was sitting at 23. And Hostel, it, like the movie no, about host, torturing people? No, Hostels. It's a Western film directed by Scott Cooper. And it has a, oh. it has a fucking um, Christian Bale in it. And it has like... Oh, Indian I might have to watch shit. that. What else has Scott Cooper done? Why does that name sound familiar? Doesn't sound familiar to me, and I'm the pop culture guy. Um, he directed Crazy Heart, uh, won an Academy Award, uh, Out of Furnace, Black Mass, and Hostels. I guess he hasn't done shit. He was an actor. He was in the X Files. Oh, yeah, Black Mass was one of them. He was an actor in Austin Powers. He was an actor in the X Files. Uh, Get low. I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> so, I don't know why Scott Cooper sounds familiar, but whatever. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it's it's odd because this is its sixth week, and this ten million that it made of the total gross it made in the other five weeks, its total gross is twelve million. So another five weeks, it only made two million dollars. So I don't know what the fuck happened to get this movie almost a two thousand percent increase in its sixth week. That's it insane. might have expanded the number of theaters it was in because I haven't even heard about it until now. Well, the th- it, I you actually, holy shit, you're right. The theater count changed from last week. Right now, it is played in 2,816 theaters across the U.S. But last week, it only had maybe 150 playing. Yeah, exactly. What the they do fuck? that every so often with movies, especially if they're not sure if they're going to be like if they're independent movies or yeah. if they're um, smaller films that they don't have a budget to release them wider, they'll do something like that. Yeah, this movie was a, this movie was at the uh, Telluride Film Festival on September second. So this is a this is probably it's in by Waypoint Entertainment. Um, yeah, never heard of any of these uh, studios that they did that uh, did it. It's got Christian Bale in it, I guess. Interesting, huh? Well, there's that. That dude's probably whoever made that's probably happy. I wonder what the budget is behind the movie, especially was at a film festival. Okay, at number four, they we have they do have budgets at film festivals. They had Blade Runner at film festivals. Oh, they had it at Cannes. Okay, well, maybe I should have you read these from now on. I'm not, I'm not the biggest movie buff. Okay, number four, we have The Greatest Showman still pulling some money, it pulled nine million this week for a total of 126 million, sitting at a budget of 84 million. With it also being on its sixth week. And at number five, we have The Post pulling almost $9 million, sitting at a total of $58 million, with a budget of $50 million, sitting in its sixth week. So those are your top five for the weekend of January 26th to the 28th of 2018. Again, that's interesting with that hostiles thing, or hostels. Um, I guess it's uh, someone made the right decision to put an additional 2,697 theaters to play it as. So that's, that's just crazy. That's a fairly large increase yeah definitely so we'll have to see how maze runner does because i don't know how the other films in that franchise did but so apparently they did just well enough to bring more sequels out but yeah it's right up there with like the you know it's that might also had, maze style or something yeah they might also had some form of contracts like oh you got we're gonna produce you're we're gonna pay to produce them but you gotta make these many movies so even if they don't do yeah, well, they still wouldn't have them do it if they didn't if they don't make money. Well, yeah, obviously if they're like literally making like a million dollars or something like that, they're not going to fucking continue. But yeah, I, I there are other you. things. The other things like that, like the Percy Jackson series, uh, pretty much went dead in the water because oh, I think yeah, the second fucking, third film. Those books weren't tanked. too bad. I enjoyed them. I never watched the movies though. I'm actually. I, I thought think the I, concept was interesting. It was like God of War for middle schoolers. Yeah. I thought that the I think I did watch the first movie because I remember one of the characters playing Call of Duty in the in the movie I think or some shit like that. I saw the I saw the first one. It was all right. Yeah, Percy, I liked it. Uh, what, what was it? Um, who was it that played Zeus or, or fucking whatever? It was Liam Neeson or something, wasn't it? I think it was. Or Ray Fiennes. Let's look it up. Here, see, Percy. It's a British guy. The Lightning Thief was the first movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, cool. They have a picture of them. I don't want the book. I want the there, IMDb. Here we go. I think they were trying to cash in on the Harry Potter audience with it, to be Zeus honest. Zeus was Sean Bean, dude. Oh, that's it. Sean Bean. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It was the only movie you see Sean Bean live in. I know, right? He always fucking dies. Even when he was He's in Final Fantasy. I'm constantly. like, this fucker is going to die somehow. Oh, man. And he did. Well, I, I knew Noctis' dad was going to die from the start before I saw anything. Well, you watched the movie, though, right? Us. Yeah, I didn't see that yeah. movie, though. Cause that was yeah, like, but it was in all the press materials. There was a... He oh. knew he was going to lose, lose his dad. Damn, this got a 6 out of 10 on IMDb. Fucking rip. This is Lightning Thief. Lightning well, 6 out of 10 is above average, man. Uh, I don't know. Just I like, mean, like, I guess... Into, yeah, okay. Well, five is con- full 5 and 6 are considered average. One's higher average, one's low average. It wasn't anything phenomenal, but I liked it. It yeah. was fun while watching. I had no like, complaints. I didn't... Spend money on it in theaters. I think I watched it on. Uh, I remember reading Netflix. the. I remember reading the book and having a crush on. It was a long time ago. Having a crush on Annabeth, but you know, like that thing where you read a book and you create the character in your mind. Uh huh. And then the movie comes out and the character is not what you thought she looked like. Kind of. <laughs> That's kind of like what they did have a me. hot chick in that movie, though, right? Wasn't she in Hell or something like that? Alexandra Daddario is her name. She is hot. I will give you that. 1986, we can talk about her that way. She was in Baywatch, too. Would you look at that? She was in Texas Chainsaw 3D as well. Well, we don't watch Texas Chainsaw movies because those are for garbage brains. Oh, my God. They're making a San Andreas 2? Did you fucking know that? I thought the first movie was did not... I, did, I didn't know anybody actually went to see the movie, <laughs> so... I can't believe that. I was like, really? That. You're making a movie about a fault and The Rock actually agreed to do that? You must have dumped money on him or Straight he doesn't give up. a shit what he's doing. That's fucking funny. I didn't funny. imagine anybody would actually watch it. So, no, I did not see that coming. Yeah. She was in person. What else What else did you think she was in? She was Who? in She was in The Sopranos, the TV show. She was in Law and Order. Um, I don't see anything else that pops into my head. She's an American American horror story, which is interesting. She's in Robot Chicken. <laughs> this is the girl that uh, played. Yeah, uh, worth their salt was in Robot Chicken. That this is the girl that played um, Annabeth, the female, the like the daughter of uh, the 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 woman, the goddess of whatever. Shows you how much I know. I'm caught up on my lore. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So that's that. We'll move a little bit forward. We got to get to our news. Um, actually, no, let's move on to our what to look for. We got some games coming out this week, guys. Uh, we had a big launch week last week with DBZ, uh, DBFC, or Dragon Ball Fighter Z, whatever, and uh, Monster Hunter. Also, Lost Sphere came out. So, a lot of good games came out last week. But moving forward, we have uh, Dissidia Final Fantasy NTs coming to PS4 on the 30th. We have Railway Empire coming to PS4 and Xbox One on the 30th. I think it's also coming to Steam. I think I saw it on Steam. Uh, We have Battalion 1944 coming to PC on February 1st. Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, is coming to PC on the 1st of February. And EA Sports UFC 3 is coming to PS4 and Xbox One on February 2nd. So, um, I didn't know Zodiac Age was coming to PC. That's pretty cool. I might pick that up. Would you recommend me playing 12, Sean? 12 is good. Okay. I might pick that up. I wonder how much it will be. We'll see. Uh, again, not right now because I still got I still got to finish fucking Assassin's Creed and stuff. So, Twelve is like a uh, it's it uses a good AI system. That's good. Um, they're called gambits, if I remember correctly. Was this before or they something like that? Was this before or after they introduced the paradigm shift game fighting uh, style? Long before that. Oh yeah, that paradigm happened. What was, was that? That was in thirteen. That was thirteen. Yeah, that no, was with Lightning. Um, Twelve is is, is a uh, a faux MMO environment. Okay. So the world that you live in as day and night cycles, NPCs will move around the map. They'll go to different places. You have an extensive hunt catalog. Okay. There's tons of. It's very big. Sounds but cool. The difference between that game and and every other Final Fantasy game, with the quasi exception of fifteen, is it. Um, Final Fantasy 12 is not high fantasy. It's not like dragons and gods and the fate of the world is in the balance of like a, a, an Armageddon cult kind of thing. It's two nations fighting and you're on one side. 
and okay. you're kind of figuring things out as you go. There is supernatural shit and all kinds of over the top whatnot. It's Final Fantasy, but yeah, <laughs> it's very. It's not like it's not your your standard high fantasy story. Okay, so let's move on to our news. Some of the recent happenings over the last week in video games. We have. Um, so this is interesting. We have Koei Tecmo still wants a Star Wars Dynasty Warriors game to happen. This is by Alessandro Filari of GameSpot. And uh, this the article says, Traditionally, the company behind the Dynasty Warriors and Dead or Alive series has been a niche player. Um, but with the critical and commercial success of Teen Ninja's Neo and its focus on delivering titles to the Nintendo Switch, Koei Tecmo suddenly cracked into the AAA game space. At a recent Koei Tecmo event, we had the chance to speak with the president of Koei Tecmo, Hisashi Koinuma, about the company's recent successes and its current outlook on the gaming market. Last February, Neo, a new IP from Koei Tecmo that suffered a lengthy development, turned out to be a rather stellar game that coupled the systems of a Souls game with the deep combat mechanics from Team Ninja's past work, which includes yeah, Ninja good. Gaiden and Dead or Alive. With Neo behind them, Koinuma spoke briefly about what its success meant for Koei Tecmo. Quote, it's been a while since a new IP became so sex became so successful like that so based on the experience we definitely want to continue to make games that offer different challenges that push us neo's success had an impact on us with the success of the switch over the last year koei tecmo's president praised the system's accessibility and library of games while also affirming the publisher's commitment to the console its plans include releases of attack on titan 2 seeing a simultaneous launch on ps4 xbox one pc and switch along with a port of one piece pirate warriors 3 Quote, I believe that the Switch was well-received and became popular because it's really suited for the modern lifestyle not only in Japan, but the U.S. also, uh, the European countries Fuck as well. <laughs> Stated Koei Numa. Um, so they're excited to make new IPs for it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then for, moving forward, um, while Dynasty Warriors 9 is moving to an open world space set to be the biggest upgrade the series has had in, in some time, the developers behind the game are still eager to work with other IPs and design them to fit Koei Tecmo's particular style. With recent Warrior titles diving into the Fire Emblem, Gundam, Legend of Zelda, and Berserk universes, Koei Numa still has his eye on a particular sci-fi, sci-fi universe that I he thinks... I still want the Berserk one. Even though it got kind of middling ratings, I still want to play it just because. But <laughs> it's I love Koei Tecmo. I will always support them but even i admit some of their efforts have had more polish than others yeah um Um, and i have my favorites and it's weird because i whereas i will never not like playing a dynasty warriors game i definitely my favorites seem to jump like i I like them all but i'll like this one the next one i'll be like yeah it's all right i'll like the next one the next one eh, i'll like the next one but i fell in love with dynasty warriors from dynasty warriors 2 on i played all of them nice um Finally, he says he's always, quote, I'm always saying this, but I think Star Wars will be really successful and I would love for us to make that game. So no, Just keep EA out according, of it. To, according to the article so far, I guess there's no response from either Disney or um, the people or probably Disney. So will Disney allow something like this to happen? Maybe. Will they the absolutely only thing they get to ruin it first? Yeah. <laughs> will they unmitigatingly shit on it? Maybe. But hey, I'm down to see a, as long as it's decent, a Star Wars uh, Dynasty Warriors game. I think that'd be pretty cool. Warriors was good, but yeah. Nintendo softened it up a lot. Yeah, um, I thought that the but recent, I thought that the recent Fire Emblem one wasn't awful. It's just it had to play on the Switch, and it was not. It has its frame issues. I'm not gonna lie, especially when you're really playing two player. If you're si- oh. And it comes out. (laughs) (laughs) In case you guys aren't familiar, Kyle has a hood side. (laughs) Oh no! Pull the PewDiePie. You just went angry. Oh man! You just went angry. (laughs) He totally went like, "Oh my god!" It wasn't. It wasn't a hard R, so we're good. Oh my fuck! That was funny. I found our intro, boys. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, it's if the game is dropping to like fucking 10, it's shit, dude. It's not that good. Especially if you're playing, because it happens only in two player. So 10? You mean like old, like when you're playing a PC game on a PC that's not strong enough to handle it 10? Yeah, like. Like click, click. Yeah. Click, yeah, click. like Godspeed, like <laughs> God forbid, like frame, like frames are dropping into the noticeably low. 
Not that they're like dropping five to ten frames. You're losing a lot of frames here, like especially on two player. And then sometimes uh, on one player. That didn't happen with Zelda. No, it didn't because Hyrule Warriors was made better, but the the Fire Emblem one was not. That I heard bad. the um, the 3DS version was actually a bit more technical than I haven't played it. So uh, like the fighting system or the gameplay mechanics were a bit deeper than they were on the Wii U version. <clears throat> um, they also have some different characters. Yeah. Oh, geez, excuse me. So moving on to the next article, we have um, this is interesting. We have Monster Hunter World crossover costumes coming to Street Fighter Five. Speaking about Street Fighter Five, that shitty game, um, Monster Hunter World is now out. Oh, this is by uh, Patrick Fowler of Gamespot. Monster Hunter World is out now, and to celebrate, developer Capcom has announced three crossover costumes for another of its games, Street Fighter uh, Five, for PS4 and PC. Costumes are based on three major armor sets you can get in Monster Hunter. The costumes will be available for Ken, R, Mika, and Ibuki, and are attainable in Street Fighter V's extra battle mode over the next three months. Each fighter gets a costume based on the particular monster's armor set in Monster Hunter. Ken gets the Rathalos armor. Um, uh, R, Mika is based on a Wyvern armor. She, or she, um, R, Mika's armor is based on the Zenagre, which is a really badass monster. And uh, Ibuki gets the Kirin armor set, which is also another badass Elder Dragon. Um, so that's what interesting. What is Blanca yet? Uh, there's no Blanca thing. Did I say Blanca? I said there's Ken, Armika, and Ibuki. No, no, I was, I was, I was. Oh, okay. Poking fun at the fact that Blanca is not a fan favorite, and he doesn't get a costume. <laughs> um, also, if nobody cares about Blanca. The crossover costumes will be available in extra battle mode, and to get the costume players need to complete a series of four challenges over four weeks, one challenge per week, and each challenge costs 2,500 fight money. Gotta make it impossible to get these fuckers. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Also, another interesting thing is in Monster Hunter, they're getting their own crossover, and you can actually play as Ryu and um, what's Ryu's uh, apprentice? Sakura? The pupil Sakura that's is the the, the one that runs around at the schoolgirl. Um, yeah, yeah, she has the school super legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Sakura. She's practicing the hakan do. <laughs> um, you can play as either of them Auto. in Monster Hunter, so you have their model <laughs> in Monster Hunter, which is oh, ridiculous. that's cool. Yeah, so they that's the cross- pretty cool. Yeah, the crossover went both ways, so that's pretty cool. I don't know when that's coming to Monster Hunter, but definitely interesting. We also they were getting a bunch of shit for Monster Hunter. They have the Horizon Zero Everybody's Dawn gonna DLC. Be running around is is Ryu. Nah, I'm I'm, 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 I'm thinking we're gonna see a bunch of Sakuras. That's what I'm thinking. Probably. <laughs> yeah, with the fucking schoolgirl outfit, she looks just like she does in the game. Um, Sakura's got like crazy every, awesome tennis legs. She has yeah, every tennis legs. Fe- look at all the females got. I mean, again, video game characters, but they have definitely yeah. accentuated parts of their body. Look at Chun Li's style. Look at freaking Chun Li, man. She yeah. started off like a relatively normal animated human being, and over the years, like she became like her a waist has gotten smaller, her tits have gotten bigger, and her thighs have become like the sexiest version of a tree trunk I've ever seen. <laughs> what is that one like, girl? I forget her name, but she has the eye patch. I used to play. I played as her when I played the game. She has an eye patch. She's a she's wearing newer com- one. Yeah, completely skin tight uh, clothes, and she's got an eye patch. She's evil. Fuck, what's her name? I'm gonna find out. This is very. I'm sure you guys love the sound of mechanical keyboard. Jury, that's her name. Jury. She's got big old bedongles. And uh, nice legs, too. And all of her shit's, like, completely skin tight. Interesting. I mean, oh, look at Cammy. Cammy's, uh, have you fucking seen, like, when she stands the opposite way? You can see her butt and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, super thong. Yeah. yeah, Cammy's always been that way. Yeah. Uh, Cammy's fun, too, the cannon spike and shit. Yeah, she, she's a good character. Cammy plays a lot like the Uppercut Brothers, but she's faster. Yeah. Where she used to be. They've rebalanced her so many times, I don't know anymore. Yeah, but a Japanese company sexualizing their female characters. Come on now, Sean. Blasphemy. Uh, what was that? 
nothing. <laughs> Let's move forward. We have a Nintendo is shutting down its first smartphone game only two years after launch. Services will end worldwide on May 9th. This is by Kevin Knezovic of GameSpot. Nintendo's first mobile game, the Mii-based social networking app Miitomo, is coming to an end. Nintendo announced it will discontinue services for the title on May 9th, a little over two years after it's launched. Quote, we can see this app as accomplishing a portion of our goal of getting Nintendo IP, in this case Mii characters, into the hands of consumers across a variety of environments worldwide. End quote. Nintendo said on its support website. Um, at the same time, we are going to... Wait, at the same time, we've seen the number of ongoing users for the app decrease. We've also decided to discontinue the service so we can better optimize our operational resources across our entire smart device business. Um, blah, blah, blah. Ahead of Miitomo's shutdown, Nintendo has removed all in-app purchases from the game, and the company is also holding a final thank you festival event leading up to its final day. Players will receive 2,000 Miitomo coins and five game tippet, tippet, tickets as a daily login bonus until the service is continued. I don't understand that. Let's give them a bunch of shit so they could lose it all when the when the service goes down. I I, I don't understand that. I mean, I guess you could f enjoy it in, in its splendor. I don't even know what the fuck Miitomo is. All I heard was it was kind of like Twitter for Nintendo. So I have no idea what it is, though. Um, as of October 2016, the app was approaching 15 million downloads, though it wasn't making very much money. Nintendo also released a handful of other smartphone games. We've all seen them. Super Mario Run, Fire Emblem Heroes, Animal Crossing po Pocket Camp. And there's also a, apparently a Legend of Zelda mobile game in the works, so I don't know what I don't know what the hell they do for Legend of Zelda that make in a mobile game thing. But then again, I'd never see Mario Mario as I know. I guess you could see Mario as like a Temple Run kind of game. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What what what? what I do don't you, play mobile games. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What would Zelda be like as a mobile game? I can't imagine what they would do that would fit a mobile game market and that they could flood with in app purchases. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like a, like a, no, but they already have like a turn-based RPG. How about they of. make a good Zelda game and just sell the <laughs> fucking game and fuck the in-app purchases. I don't just know. give me the game. Well, their, their whole goal is to make mobile games and the whole mobile game idea is to flood it with in-app purchases and make it kind of fun. So you could bring people back and they'll maybe spend money on it. Yeah, but that's that. Um, again, I don't know anybody that's retarded enough to spend money on mobile games besides of, buying them one and done. A lot of people do. I've, again, it depends on the person. Because um, if someone doesn't get the time to play games often, but every once in a while they just kind of hop on their phone and do something here and there to give them enjoyment while they're waiting for their next whatever they're doing. I uh, put a couple bucks in Nui Runa online, but that's a free-to-play MMO that was really well done. I mean, if you really well done for like I don't even lower like standards. <laughs> the low, well, graphically, the lowest possible standard. It was the, the it followed the oldest patterns of um, MMOs. Like this thing was like PlayStation One graphics, maybe worse. But it was. I had a great community. I had a good time playing it, and then I moved on to Torum Online, and that one's just phenomenal. I played that when it was in beta, and it was free. And they they had everything you could get. Like you, you there were no in app purchases. And even today, the in app purchases are fairly minimal. So it's this fully fleshed out, fun, you know, MMO that you can play on your phone that is completely. Uh, you could. I mean, I, I've never once felt the need to put any money into it. I really like it. I just have better games to play on my console. But if I was like out and about a lot, like I'd be on Torum a lot more. Yeah. I still like the game. It's a good game. <clears throat> okay. So I don't know what the fuck they do with the Legend of Zelda. I don't know why we're talking about that. But... <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, let's move a little bit more forward again. We have God of War finally gets a release date confirmed for PS4, and we have a new story, story trailer that has been released. This is Tamar Hussein of GameSpot. Sony has announced God of War will launch for PlayStation 4 on April 20th. That day will be pretty lit, if I do say so myself. The announcement was made on the PlayStation blog, where a new trailer also made its debut. It focuses on Kratos as he grapples with trying to teach his son, A Atreus, Atreus, about restraint, responsibility, and consequence, which are all things When Kratos did he become a good guy? He's always been a giant... Hope I mean, he's always been almost nearly as bad as the things he was trying to kill. Hopefully we'll find Atreus. out in this game. I'm hoping they like explain he, the transition. He settled down. He's, he's trying to raise his son to be a good person. He's not 
intentionally trying to destroy the world by killing the gods that uphold it. I don't oh. understand any of what's happening right now. Hopefully we'll find also, out. Also, old Kratos gives me the creeps. All right. Give me the, the, I, I think he's Kratos not human pretty... anymore anyway. Yeah. I like, think... if he's not human, then why is his beard growing and he looks old? What is that? I, I don't know. I think new Kratos looks pretty cool, though. Uh, Did he tell? And also, my question is, has he told his son, by the way, I'm wearing your sister and my ex and my and my first wife on my skin like this is them touch them. Yeah, that's my son. That's his ashes because I'm fucking creepy. <laughs> uh, Somebody humped a dude that was covered in ashes of his dead <laughs> wife and child. OK, actually, I think it was, was it a son or a daughter. I think he had a daughter. I don't know. We're trying to teach. So, his... yeah, you're... OK, let me finish the article. We're trying to teach his son Atreus about restraint or Atreus. Uh, responsibility and consequence, which are all things Kratos learned the hard way in his previous life as a godslayer. Interesting. As a inter- terrorist. Interestingly, his son isn't aware that Kratos is a deity and is starting to face the same struggle with power and rage that his father did. Of course, there's also plenty of typical God of War eye candy to show, ranging from lush environments and sweeping vistas to towering monsters. Also in the post, game director Corey Barlog, I thought it was Balrog. I was like, oh shit, that's pretty cool. Uh, Corey Barlog uh, detailed God of War's various special editions as well as pre order bonuses. Anyone that puts their money down for the game ahead of its release at, at participating retailers will get three legendary skins for Kratos' shield. Whoop de fucking do. You know, the last one, they released do. a fucking Pandora's chest with a whole bunch of cool shit. Like, it was really nice. And so this one, they're like, okay, we'll give you shield skins. If you pre order. <laughs> if, we, if you pre-order GameStop, if you pre-order at GameStop or EB Games, I haven't heard that name in forever, you'll also get the Luck of the Ages experience EB Games, boost. Electronics Boutique is still around? I guess. Which grants plus 10 luck. GameStop and, bought them. I don't know. Which grants plus 10 luck and one enchantment slot. Luck increases the amount of experience and hack silver gained and lets you use abilities more often. Okay, I don't, I don't know. me some enchantment slots. Um, the collector's edition looks pretty dope. It's got like a really badass uh, figure going on there, um, and some cool art book. Some little you get an action figure. You get a statue. Oh, I bet you it's already <laughs> fucking sold out too. God damn it! I'll, I'll save the image so I could put it in the um, Discord so you can see it uh, later. Okay. The collector's edition is 130 US dollars, uh, 170 Canadian dollars. European price has not been set yet. It includes a nine inch statue of Kratos and Atreus, a steel book case, a two inch Holdra Brothers carvings, a cloth map. Oh, that's pretty cool. An art piece on its own. And it also features the Death's Vow armor set, Exile's Guardian Shield, and an issue of the God of War digital comic, a digital art book, and a dynamic theme for your. I don't PlayStation. give a fuck about a digital art book. I just would rather have the book. Thank this, you. The Stone Mason edition, meanwhile, features all the content mentioned above, as well as a Stone Mason's ring, a m- Mimmer's head talking keychain, and a two-inch horse and troll carving, and the Defender of the Chosen in-game shield. Cost 150 USD. Jesus, they're going balls to the wall with these editions and $200 Canadian. Finally, the Digital Deluxe Edition has the full game, digital art book, digital comic, dynamic theme, Death's Vow armor set, Guardian Shield, blah, blah, blah. And they'll even, if you pre-order that edition, they'll even send you a Kratos and Artrius physical pin. And that costs 70 US dollars, 90 Canadian. So. I'm hoping that I can still get the collector's edition of NT after it releases. I'm hoping it doesn't oh, sell out on Square's site because it's $189 and I don't, I just don't, I can't. This and is I'm uh, really fucking upset because I've tried for so long to this is, put it together and I can't. For all you listening, this is Final Fantasy Dissidia that comes out on the 30th. The, the collector's edition for that. That's what he's referring to when he says NT. Um, and finally, we got some interesting news. Uh, this might be the downfall or the rise of a new generation. We have John Cena in talks to play Duke Nukem in the new movie. And this is that a, should have been our fucking subject right there. <laughs> this is a Michael Bay production. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Why? Oh Why? my god! He's come back to fuck you, Sean. No! 
I don't think I could have made there your day any no worse. There's no justice in this world. <laughs> no. Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. I didn't know that, so that shit put me in for a dizzy. This is by Eddie Mackick of GameSpot. We have the wrestler and movie star John Cena is in talks to play Duke Nukem in an upcoming movie, upcoming movie based on the brash video game character. This is according to the Hollywood Reporter, which has word about the film is coming from Paramount and Michael Bay's production studio, Platinum Dunes. The report states that the new t- <laughs> that the Duke Nukem film is in the early stages of production. No director or other cast members have been announced. While a search is reportedly currently underway to find a writer, it's also unclear what other actors might be in running to play Duke Nukem. Cena and Nukem do share a resemblance. It is very minimal. Like, they have the pictures yeah, I decided. Minimal. They don't fucking look that much alike. Cena and no. Paramount already worked together on the movie Daddy's Home 2. He's also set to show up on the Transformers spinoff Bumblebee. Fucking leave the series alone. Have mercy. Just let them die. Like, you've <laughs> killed them so much. Let them die. And somebody drop a heavy object on Michael Bay. <laughs> just enough to... You don't have to kill him. I just want him... Like, if you just break his mind a little bit yeah. so that he's retarded. vegetative state is fine with me can't, yeah as long as he can't direct movies or produce movies or have anything to do with movies just break his arms and legs you're good to go he probably yeah, like be shatter fine if he just only worked on original content if he wasn't trying every time he touches someone else's property transformers fucking anything any t- 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 turtles pre-existing material he rapes it he rapes it and violates it and puts it in this bad place. But when he makes an original story like Armageddon, that was okay. It wasn't the best movie ever, but I liked it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. You know, I mean, Pearl Harbor was trash, but there were girls that liked it. <laughs> I mean, that's something. All right. Cena's, C- Cena's, Cena's other movie Cena. credits <laughs> include... John <laughs> Cena! <laughs> <laughs> God fucking damn it. Uh, well, I actually more, think I have that on my phone too. Well, well, more recently, he was the voice of Ferdinand in the animated movie of the same name. The Duke Nukem video game series has been dormant since 2011's critically panned, but millions selling Duke Nukem forever. Gearbox Software, which owns the rights to the Duke Nukem series, confirmed in 2015 that it had done some concept work on an all-new head-turning Duke Nukem game. However, Gearbox Gearbox might not be making the new game. Quote, I think the faster way is that a correct developer can become interested and can work with them, Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford said at the time. Quote, I think it's a challenging problem, but I'll tell you one thing. When it does happen, there's no doubt that the whole industry will turn its head and look. They're going to make Duke Nukem a girl, and... uh, yeah. Uh, it's an SJW, and <laughs> he's politically correct, except when he's slamming feminine, um, you, know, you know, misogynists. Make him a lesbian. And, uh, we got it. And then for that movie, yeah, but Duke Nukem we'll, turns we'll put... lesbians into like you don't understand. He is every obnoxious male fantasy rolled into one deliciously, you know, transgressive package. <laughs> so he's supposed to be insulting and angering and annoying, and yet. He, he he's both the joke and the punchline and that's what makes him fucking great and yes it's titillation and fan service and boobs and all that kind of shit i they, uh, they're not, none of that will be there and if michael bay does it he's just going to have some 14 year old sexy 14 year old abs on it and that which is that's okay but that's not nearly what i'm looking for with duke nukem okay <laughs> i've I hate you, Michael Bay. I hate you so much, and you always return to haunt me. <laughs> like a child rolling in his sleep at night. <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> Transformers. Bumblebee spinoff. Oh, man. Okay. I'm right. crying. He is. You, I can hear it. I can hear it in your voice, Sean. It's okay. It's okay. I thought I was free of him. I thought he was gone. He ruined Ninja Turtles. He ruined Transformers. Thought nobody would give him anything else. All right, Sean. Pull yourself together. I need an outro from you. I don't know if I have it. You've destroyed me. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Michael fucking Bay. Huh. Fucking over Duke Nukem. God damn it. 
Okay. I'd like to look at it like Michael Bay really doesn't understand women and he might actually make a Duke Nukemish kind of thing. Because, you know, he's an idiot. But I just, I, I don't have faith. I do not. Come on, Sean. I don't, I, hugs and Are kisses you... and all your pink parts. Just defeated, Sean. It's quite a sad night indeed. And Fucking Michael Bay, dude. <clears throat> Michael fucking gay. I hate him. I hate him. God, I hate him. Before we so much. before we close out this I roller coaster, not your pink parts, guys. <laughs> and remember, I'm still single. If you want some sex, <laughs> before we close out this roller coaster of an emotional episode, I'd Surprise. like to leave you guys with a thought. The phrase "rule of thumb" is derived from an old English law, which stated that you couldn't beat your Everybody wife. Everybody knows this one. Go find another quote. Everybody knows that. Go find something else. I didn't know it. <laughs> Yes, everybody knows the fucking rule of thumb thing, dude. If you've seen Boondock Saints, you know what that means. Everybody knows that. Find something else. Yeah, well, it stated that you couldn't beat your wife with anything wider than your thumb. Let me find something else. Everybody though. knows that. Well, everybody now, knows well, that. Well, now more people know it, fucker. You, you, you're the only one that didn't know that. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Okay, how about this? Okay. Before we go, <laughs> I'll leave you guys <laughs> with a thought. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> A bull can inseminate 300 cows from one ejaculation. <laughs>